Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of what if Naruto became the hunter fox of Konoha if you enjoy the video then like, share and subscribe as it inspires me to make more such videos. So let's get started. Chapter 6 Hunter's Fear After Naruto left Hana to return to the village, Naruto found a little hotel to stay. Looking at the bingo book, he was surprised to see that the last one on the list was the last sea level missing nin on the book. So far, he didn't consider as much of a challenge being a hunter nin, however he knew that missing nins weren't given ranks by abilities alone. As he turned to look at the B-ranked ones, he acknowledged that they are indeed much more cunning than the C-ranked level ones. Naruto was stunned that the B-ranked ones are composed of x jounins and wondered if he had the ability to deal with a person of this level. You'll need to train more indeed if you want to be on equal terms with people of this level. Tomorrow, we'll be increasing your pace as well as train more ninjutsu. For the B-ranked missing nins, you'll need katan ninjutsu aside from futen. I'll teach you one high-level katan ninjutsu and will also improve your futen race and shuriken wind release spiral shuriken jutsu. Now with improvement regarding wind manipulation, we could finally complete that jutsu said the kyubi to which Naruto nodded. After learning Futen K Seishou Wind Release, Wind Gathering Jutsu, Naruto was wondering whether or not he could finish the race Shuriken, simply because he was now a master at wind manipulation. The only question now was how. No matter how much Naruto changed the Yondime's original technique, every racing Gan based technique was limited to close ranged attack, and Naruto wasn't entirely comfortable with that anymore. Charging the technique, and then attacking the enemy, ends up giving a tunnel vision to the blonde and gives the enemy time enough to just dodge and attack Naruto, and that was something he didn't want to. Not to mention that all the times you used, you failed to hit the enemy every single time. You only managed to hit that Kabuto because you had to hold his hand for dear life. Now that you managed to add Futen Chakra to the racing Gan, we can try throwing the spiraling Shuriken explained Kyubi, earning a thinking pose from Naruto. Throwing the racing Gan was something even Jiryu couldn't do, not either Yon Dime. Jiryu once told me that once the racing Gan escaped the hand's grasp, it was impossible to maintain the rotation, and the spiraling ball ends up dissipating said Naruto to which Kyubi thought about something as well, getting an idea which might work. I admit that is quite difficult to maintain the technique once it escapes from the hand, however with Futen Chakra spinning around the ball, the rotation will remain until the attack hits the target. Well, it's getting late the last one on the C-ranked missing nins is close to here so I'll rest for today, and we can hunt her in the morning said Naruto before going to bed and rest. Ikazuki Misao escaped the village after witnessing the death of her lover for unknown reasons. When Naruto read the name of the man, he was surprised to see that he was an Achiha by the name of Shizui. Truth be told Naruto didn't know who this man was. According to the book, Misao was gone rogue for 10 years now, and this time, the blonde was only 6 years old. Also, Naruto was reluctant to kill Misao. The woman's only crime was only to leave the village and nothing else. Naruto was also wondering why no hunter nin ever went after her, seeing that the woman was gone for more than 10 years now and thus far, her page was not scrapped off the book. In Konoha Minus. Looking at the village on the horizon, Hana stops to check on Kuramaru's pups only to see both of them sniffing the husky's triplets. She smiled upon realizing that with the help of that hunter nin, which she had the conviction it was indeed Naruto, the Inazuka family was now complete once again. She remembered how easily the hunter nin interacted with one of her triplets. It was really the first time someone outside the Inazuka clan ever managed to do this and Hana wondered what the dogs thought of that hunter nin. Truth be told, the Inuzuka clan measured their lovers firstly by how he or she interacts with the dogs. Changing the subject quickly inside her mind, Hana entered the village and signed some papers with Izumo and Kotetsu. After that, she went to her house to drop the pups, and then she would step inside the Hokage's office. Walking through the village, she greeted some of her acquaintances. A while later, she bumped into Kirena and the two turned to talk a little while charging towards the Inazuka compound. Kirena asked where Hannah went and also asked why two more dogs. Hannah smiled and explained to the crimson eyed Jounin that the two new ones were rescued with the help of a hunter nin. Kirena was suspicious when said ninja position appeared. 
Kirena oftentimes wondered how Naruto was doing out there since it's been a while and she received no news of him. Being a Jounin, she heard amongst her peers on how a new hunter nin is cleaning out the book much faster than any other hunter nin ever did. She heard that this new hunter nin took out the entire C-ranked missing nin's division, and it's one more left for him to go for the B-ranked ones. She had suspicious, though, because one of the Jounins described the man using all black and a sword strapped on his back. But she didn't have proof that it was Naruto. Focusing on Hannah's conversation, she heard the Inazuka Chunin reveal that the hunter Nin was blonde, and she heard Hannah questioning to herself how many blondes she knew in Konoha. Upon hearing this, she had the proof she needed. Naruto was the only blonde-haired person apart from the Hokage and he's the only blonde hunter Nin he knew, so of course, should be him. Kirena heard Hannah describing how the hunter Nin dealt with the Inazuka missing Nin and was surprised to see Naruto using a Futen Ninjutsu that beat the Inuzuka's Gitsuga, being this the Inuzuka's strongest attack alongside the companion. Upon arriving at the compound, Kirena bid her farewell to Hannah and promised to meet some time later. Hannah smiled and brought the pups inside the house. Once inside, the two pups ran towards their father's scent and left Hannah and her dogs to bring the news to Tsum and Kiba who were having lunch. Oh Hannah-chan, I see you managed to retrieve the pups, then. Tell me about it, asked Tsum, earning Kiba's interest at the story. Well, I met with the hunter Nin, and then we went to search for Takashi. When we found him, the man had the nerve of wanting to catch up with his niece. Surprisingly, the hunter Nin stepped aside and said that he didn't want to meddle into family business, which pissed me off even more than Takashi said Hannah earning a snicker from Kibal, and laughter from Tsum from seeing Hannah getting rather angry. Snarling at her family, she decided to continue. Well, after the hunter Nin returned to battle, he turned to piss Takashi off by taunting him. After the man's veins popped of his forehead, he engaged the hunter Nin with our clan's Jutsi, but was stopped by the hunter Nin's surprisingly mastery of Futen Ninjutsu thus killing him for good. The strange thing was that the hunter Nin didn't attack the pups, even if they were attacking him. I found it strange as well that one of my huskies didn't bark to the hunter Nin and even let him scratch the husky's ear described Hannah, surprising Sum and Kiva, since first of all, both of them knew how dangerous it was to lift a hand in front of the huskies and also the fact that Hannah changed the angry mood at the end of the description. Where is the hunter Nin now Hannah Chan? I assumed he had to send Konoha a proof of the kill asked Tsum to which Hannah shrugged, indicating that she didn't know. The hunter Nin sealed Takashi's head inside a scroll, and then burned off his body. I figured that he would have an inside channel in order to send said scroll to either the Hokage, or the hunter Nin commander. Well, mother, I need to go talk to Hokage-sama about the mission, I have some questions for her as well said Hannah before walking back to the door, before she saw Kamari sleeping under the table. I know it's you Naruto. I remember Kiba saying that you were the only one who didn't regard a Kamaru as being a pet, but a companion instead. I want to get to know you better. Thought Hannah before opening the door and going straight to the Hokage's office. Soon chose not to mention to Hannah in front of Kiba, since she knew Kiba would piss her off with ease. She knew her daughter, and knew when she was intrigued about something. Hannah was always a very curious woman and soon presumed that her daughter's curiosity was towards that hunter Nin she mentioned earlier. Soon didn't know of many Futen users in Konoha and the last one she knew was murdered by Akatsuki. She would ask the Hokage later about Takashi's head, and then ask a few things about this hunter Nin. At Sinead's office minus. Already inside the Hokage's office, Hannah presented the report of the fight, and also the pup's retrieval back to Konoha. Sinead smiled at the success of the mission, but wondered why she had the suspicion that Hannah wanted to say more than just what happened at the mission. True to her worries, Hannah approached her. Sinead Sama, I was wondering if you could tell me something about that hunter Nin. Asked Hannah to which Sinead was surprised, but maintained the neutrality for now. Hannah, I can only answer so much without endangering his or her identity said Sinead allowing the younger girl to ask away. I managed to see that he had blonde hair and told that he knew an Inuzuka whose companion had white fur thus I'm sure he was referring to my brother Kiba. Therefore, is he an said Hannah before Tsunade stopped her from continuing. Hannah, 
I see that you figured out his identity. That being said, we're going to take a walk, and I'll fill you in with what happened. I don't want to risk someone overhearing what I have to say. Said Sine to which Hannah became serious and nodded. Once outside and walking towards the park, Sine told everything to Hannah. The Kirena episode, Naruto choosing to become a hunter nin so that Akatsuki won't come to the village, Daria's counterintelligence mission, everything. Hannah was surprised about all this and asked the Hokage why she was telling everything to her. Sinead smiled and replied. I happen to know that Inuzukas are loyal to the village, hence they are loyal to the Hokage. The fact that you know about Naruto's whereabouts now puts you inside our plan. Hannah this isn't a ranked secret and you'll be prohibited to discuss any of this without either mine of Jiria's authorization said Sinead to which Hannah nodded, and then turned to ask more about the blonde. Atsunade Sama, I would like to know a few more things if I may ask Hannah to which Tsunade nodded, letting her continue. Well, I happen to realize how Naruto treats my family's dogs and it's safe to say that not all men in Konoha treat them like they should. After I saw Naruto petting one of my dogs so easily, I began to wonder about something. I happen to know of his tenant, and although he smells like a fox, neither I nor the dog sensed any evil presence inside of him. I figured that at least my dogs would bark at him said Hannah to which Tsunade nodded and smiled at the girl's curiosity. I don't know how, but if what you said is true then Naruto either is in total control over the fox inside of him or the blonde was right all along. You see before he left to become a hunter nin, Naruto told me that he and the fox shared his body. I was hesitant to believe that Naruto had so much resolve in order to be able to control a demon's urge. But now that you said so, I tend to believe he was right said Sine to which Hannah was surprised. She remembered hearing this from Kirena, but she also didn't believe it. However seeing her dogs at ease with him and the Hokage also telling her this, she now believed Naruto was right. It would certainly explain the scent, and also this new being's behavior. Suddenly Hannah's perverted mind sprang to action, and she imagined seeing Naruto behaving like an animal while ravaging her. Tsunade wondered why Hannah suddenly spaced off like that and wondered why all this curiosity towards Naruto. It took a while until she remembered something interested about an Inuzuka female. She remembered how Hannah's mother soon behaved upon meeting her now deceased husband and wondered if perhaps Hannah is feeling the same thing towards a feral Naruto. Waking up from her daydream, which consisted of Naruto ripping all her clothes, Hannah apologized at the Hokage for doing this and asked her to be dismissed. Safe to say Tsunade knew about an Inuzuka's sexual behavior, thus she dismissed the girl. Hannah vanished quickly and went towards somewhere private in order to blow off some steam. It wouldn't do for her to be anywhere near someone when she was turned on. Arriving at the forest of death, she was able to relieve and then rest on the tree she landed on. It was safe to say that Hannah was even more curious than before and vowed to meet the blonde in the future. With Naruto minus. Oblivious to the fact that someone was thinking about him, Naruto checked out of the hotel he was staying at, and went to a clear area to initiate his training. Right, you already got your new set of weights to increase the training pace, summon some cage functions and I'll explain to you about the technique called Katan Zukoku, fire release head mincing pain jutsu. The real you will be practicing the usual katas, and then we'll focus on the race and shuriken explained Kyubi to which Naruto nodded and summoned 50 cage bunshins and took his sword and began striking at the many invisible enemies, while his cage bunshins were focusing on the new fire technique. Little did Naruto know though, that he was being watched. Avoiding the hunter nin for Kami know how long, Misao already was able to predict when another one would come to take her life away, just because she committed the crime of leaving Konoha. Uchiha Shizui's death was like killing her instead and Misao couldn't stay in Konoha any longer from fear of remembering Shizui's face any longer. At the time, she thought about how weak she was for leaving for a petty reason like this. However, some time later, she didn't regret her decision seeing that she was able to meet the one who cured her heartache and started a family with. She continued her training as a genjutsu specialist and a few teijutsu katas just in case the hunters managed to dispel the genjutsu. It was this way that she managed to escape from the hunters or take him out and drop them at an unknown location. Now, this new hunter Nin was near her and she suspected he would be after her very soon. 
Back to Naruto, his clones had already learned the technique, which consisted of expelling fire from the user's mouth, and then quickly spread it towards the enemy, burning anything in its path. He also got used to the new set of weights, and was going through the katas when Kyubi stopped him and told him to now focus on the race and shuriken. Naruto acknowledged, and put his sword back to its holster. Summoning the two cage bunshins, he stopped upon realizing that he now had sufficient control over the racing gan in order to do it by himself. However, he still needed one bunshin to supply the ball with food and chakra hence why he dispelled the other clone and performed the racing gan. After, while the real Naruto kept the ball's rotation and strength, the clone supplied food and chakra thus finishing the race shuriken. Meanwhile Misao was gaping at the amount of chakra being used, and the amount of control this hunter Nin was using to perform this technique. Misao wasn't ignorant to the fact that very few ninjas could attempt the Yan Dimes technique. She knew that apart from the very creator, only the San Injuria and a respected anime captain called Hatake Kakashi could, although she never saw him using. For this hunter Nin to be able to do it, it meant that either Jiryu or Kakashi taught it to him. Also, Misao was searching her mind and realized that the real racing gan consisted of pure chakra manipulation, while this hunter Nin managed to not only complete the chakra manipulation, but also managed to incorporate his elemental chakra into the ball as well, thus completing the Yan Dimes technique. Now she was afraid for her life. If this guy was after her, she didn't have hopes of surviving a confrontation. Turning to escape as far away as possible Misao made a terrible mistake and ended up kicking a stone which in turn produced enough noise for Naruto to see that he was being watched. Vanishing in a second and appearing at the source of the sound Naruto was surprised to see his last C-ranked target staring directly at him. Naruto could see that the woman was scared for her life which he could only presume that she saw him using the race Shuriken. From Naruto could see... The woman was very pretty and he knew the photo didn't do her justice at all. Misao was at her 30s right now, but she had the body of a 20-year-old girl. She had red her, black eyes and a skin that any woman would die for. She was dressed in a gray fighting kimono which showed Naruto that the woman wanted to hide, but she would be prepared in case the enemy found her position. Misao didn't want to attack since she knew he would crush her easily, so she chose Genjutsu. Magan Narakami no Jutsu Hell Viewing Technique. However, Naruto didn't even move which indicated to her that either he dissipated as quickly as it was casted, or he was immune to the technique. Little did she know that this hunter Nin had two minds instead of one and although she managed to catch Naruto's mind, Kyubi used his chakra and instantly blocked any genjutsu from interfering with the battle. Misao, before you decide to attack me one more time with genjutsu, hear me out for a second. I happen to see your picture from the bingo book, and I also know that the only crime you ever committed so far was to abandon the village. Whether it was for a valid reason or not, it's not up to me to judge. Now, what I want to know is how you managed to run from the hunter nins for 10 years? Asked Naruto to which Misao wondered what this man was talking about. Up until now, all hunter nins that came after her didn't bother to open their mouths and started attacking but this one chose instead to chat. Don't you want to kill me? After all it's your job isn't it? Asked Miss Out. My job is to catch criminals that left Konoha from either murdering someone or stealing something valuable. I don't consider leaving the village a felony worthy of my attention, so tell me how did you manage to escape Konoha's hunter nin squad insisted Naruto to which Miss Out sighed seeing that this man hold no intention of either capturing her or causing her harm. For 10 years of my life, I've been training my genjutsu up to perfection in order to escape the hunter's trail. However, there were those who managed to dispel my techniques, hence the fact that I had to defend myself with pure taijutsu. Eventually, I got lucky and managed to use a genjutsu which would render the man unconscious and then escape as far away as possible. Up until now, I've managed to escape by using genjutsu, but now that you so easily dispelled it, I guess it's no use to even fight you said Misao, already admitting defeat. Naruto, however, was still reluctant to kill this woman simply because he knew deep inside that Misao wasn't a bad person at all. Misao for her part wondered what possessed this man to not finish her off. I can see deeply inside your eyes that you are not a bad person. My job is to hunt those who present a threat to Konoha and those who live in it. 
Yu on the other hand, chose to leave for grief over a Chiha Shizui's death. I happen to know a woman who also left the village after the loss of her lover and her brother due to the war, and I also happen to know that having some time alone is the best cure to all heartaches. My only advice for you is to leave fire country and head to a place far from here. I'll send a message to Konoha saying that you're already dead by bandits, thus it will take Konoha away from you said Naruto to which Misao gaped at what he said. Up to now, Misao didn't know of any shinobi who would simply let her go like that. However, this hunter nin not only did let her go, but also would help her by taking Konoha's trail off her. But why would he do this for someone he didn't know? Why this man would let her go just like that? Those questions appeared like crazy into Misa's mind up to the point that she had to ask him. Naruto's answer, though was enough to change the woman's image of Hunter Nins for good. No one should suffer for what he or she didn't cause it. You just wanted to leave Konoha and never come back. Although what you did was a crime to Konoha's shinobi law of conduct, you left for emotional reasons. However, should anyone recognize you from the bingo book, they will try to catch you so it's imperative that you leave fire country at once said Naruto to which Misao nodded and smiled at him. I'll be forever grateful Hunter Nin, thank you said Misao before vanishing and never look back. Naruto sighed seeing that he needed to send another report to Tsunade and hope that she falls for it. I hope that in the future, you don't be so merciful with the other opponents. I'd hate to see you fall for the enemy's trap, because you felt he or she was telling the truth snarled Kyubi, not at all entertained with the idea of Naruto choosing his targets from her on out. Naruto sighed seeing that no matter what happened, a demon would always have the instincts of one. Her eyes told me all I needed to know Kyubi. Just because a ninja is listed in the bingo book, said person isn't necessarily a criminal or a thief. As a matter of fact as the ranks goes up, surely we will face opponents who although deserved the rank because of skills, didn't deserve it based on their actions against Konoha. Miss Sao was an example of that. Besides, I'd have such a bitchy conscience if I were to take a life of an innocent person who in my opinion, did the same thing as Tsunade Sama did said Naruto without much left to argue to which Kyubi could answer with a whatever and in order to head back to training. Acknowledging the order, Naruto returned to the clear area he once was and continued on the race to Shuriken manipulation. Because of the success over the next step in Futen manipulation, Naruto found that the spiral Shuriken on his hand wasn't so much near his hand anymore, thus hovering a little distance away from Naruto's hand. This proved that 1, the technique wouldn't hurt him as much as it did in the past and 2, the third phase of Futen manipulation increased Naruto's control over the technique. This is as far as we're able for the moment. If you need to use this technique, settle a cage bunshin to deliver the attack instead of you. This way, we won't have to worry about getting your arm hurt said Kyubi to which Naruto nodded and thanked the fox. Since it was already nighttime, the blonde decided to head back to the hotel he once was but this time he would be henged into a civilian so that no one would recognize him. Once he managed to get a room, he picked up the bingo book and looked at the first one from the B-ranked section. The man's name is Shurinui Aoi and he was a Jounin before leaving Konoha. According to the bingo book, Aoi was a master of Sutan ninjutsu and also very proficient at Teijutsu. Naruto however frowned because the book didn't say anything about the man's second affinity, which was needed for him to become a Jounin. Setting that lack of information aside for now, Naruto learned that the man was responsible for the death of two Chunins at a mission. According to the book, Aoi was trying to set up a trap for the enemy, but he pushed things too far and the enemy managed to learn about the setup thus killing Moi's teammates. At the time, the man left the mission from fear of being murdered as well. Because of his actions, Sandaim Hokage was furious at the man, thus holding him responsible for the Chunin's lives and demoted him back to Jenin. The man left because of the punishment, Therefore he was declared a missing nin. The only problem was that the news of his location was vague at best. The book could only point his last location which by the way was near Tanzaki Gai. After that, Naruto knew nothing of said man. Naruto wasn't so much of a tracker, focusing only on train his fighting skills. Therefore, he would need to ask around, and maybe he would be lucky enough to find the guy. 
Why don't you see with that frog of yours if there is any tracker you could use? Said Kyubi to which Naruto thought about it. It was true, he could check with Gamakichi to see if they have a tracker in the family. However, if someone would see him summoning a toad, Naruto would be in serious danger of someone uncovering his identity. It wouldn't hurt to ask Gamakichi though. Summoning his partner inside the room Naruto realized his mistake upon seeing that Gamakichi was seconds away from breaking the floor below. Gamakichi, would you please diminish your size a bit? Asked Naruto, though a bit too calm for the situation. The toad quickly complied and Naruto sighed in relief upon not hearing the noise of wood breaking anymore. Hey bro, why did you summon me? Asked Gamakichi to which Naruto greeted the toad and turned to question the now little toad. Gamakichi, I need to track an enemy and I'm in need of a toad tracker asked Naruto to which Gamakichi smiled. Of course I do bro. I am smiled Gamakichi, earning a scowl from Naruto, who didn't know that and could have summoned him more. However, Naruto's face showed Gamakichi that he was hesitant to believe that the toad in front of him was a tracker. Not that I don't believe in you buddy, but I never would have thought a toad would be able to track someone. The pervert never mentioned of a toad that could do that said Naruto to which Gamakichi scoffed at the blonde even though he wasn't at fault. By channeling chakra, anyone can increase their senses. We toads happen to use nature chakra thus being able to feel all presences within a large area explained Gamakichi with an air of superiority, however Naruto was frowning his eyebrow in doubt at the mention of nature chakra, and he asked the toad what it was. Perhaps in time, I could explain it to you, but for now just trust that I have such ability, therefore I'll be able to help you in whatever you need. Just summon me and tell me what you need said Gamakichi to which Naruto nodded before seeing the toad vanish once again. After that, Naruto drifted off to sleep. The next day minus. Checking out under the disguise of a civilian, Naruto went towards the last location of his enemy, where he would, then summon Gamakichi to search for Mon. Tanzaki guy wasn't far from where he was and on the way, Naruto could meditate on food and manipulation and its effects on his techniques. So far, he only tested his new abilities with the racing shuriken. He assumed that he wouldn't need to focus on how much food and chakra he would need to use for a technique. Also, the fact that with your mastery over the wind element around you, you can use it to your benefit. For example, you could create a defensive food and ninjutsu just by focusing on the wind around you. I could give an idea for the name if you want to said Kyubi to which Naruto laughed at the fox's clear interest in learning another element apart from fire. Humor me fox. What name would you give to the technique? Thought Naruto to which the fox cleared his throat and said Futen Keizutaku no Jutsu Wind Release Wind Shield Jutsu. Naruto admitted he was very impressed by the fox's creation and praised the fox for it, though it was fueled with so much sarcasm that Naruto received a snarl in return for his compliment. It was one thing that pleasured the blonde greatly was pissed the fox off. All the grumbling, the snorting, the curse mumblings. Naruto couldn't help himself. Of course, the fox also enjoyed pissing the blonde off seeing, as he often made comments that would send the blonde's pride to the floor. Naruto and Kyubi was so involved in their conversation, that when Naruto stopped to see where he was he looked up to see the huge walls of Tanzaki guy right in front of him. Ah, uh, guess I lost the track of time. I guess good things don't last. Well, I guess we'll get to postpone our little verbal game Kyubi. I have a criminal to catch thought Naruto to which Kyubi nodded, saying that after this man Naruto would focus on creating the wind shield. Summoning Gamakichi, Naruto asked the now little toad to focus on all presences that possesses a Sutan affinity. Since Konoha was a few miles away from the place, Naruto was sure the toad wouldn't be able to reach that far. Acknowledging the request, Gamakichi began to summon nature chakra, and instantly all presences within a certain distance appeared as though Gamakichi were side by side with them. Focusing on the presence of Sutan chakra Gamakichi was happy to tell Naruto that he indeed managed to sense a few presences. Gamakichi exclude the presences that are near Konoha or heading that direction, this guy is Jounin level. He would avoid Konoha at all costs said Naruto to which Gamakichi nodded and returned to his focus. Excluding those near to Konoha, 
Yamakichi was able to focus on a unique and very strong presence a couple of miles northwest from their position, earning a nod from Naruto who in turn appreciated his help and told the Toad that he would summon in case of necessity. After the Toad vanished, Naruto channeled some chakra and charged towards said man's destination. On the way though, the blonde was hesitant. This will be his first high-level opponent since he became a hunter nin and now he was all alone against the guy. After a while, Naruto landed on top of a tree where he could see a small house. Certainly, his opponent was there waiting for him. Nevertheless, Naruto now couldn't just barge in without worrying if the enemy already knew of his presence. If this Aoi character managed to find his location before Naruto realizes, the man could very well sneak from behind and use a potent ninjutsu to take Naruto down. Naruto, behind you shouted Kyubi thus alerting Naruto to a bunch of kunais that were attacking him from behind. Without hesitation, Naruto jumped away from the kunais and took his sword. Well, if it isn't another hunter nin who is fool enough to take me out. You have the skills kid since you were able to sense me sneaking behind you like that. However, skills alone won't win this battle said Oi before dropping into his taijutsu stance which scared Naruto a little bit. In Konoha minus. Knocking at the Hokage's office door, Uzuti Geishi entered inside after getting Sinead's authorization. Sinead for her part, upon seeing said man frowned a bit. She never enjoyed the man's presence much and seeing as he now had news of Naruto, she now had to bear his presence more than needed before. What is it Uzuti? I'm much occupied here said Sine to which the leader nodded. Oh, just wanted to say that she sent me a very interesting message. According to him one Ikesuti Misao was already killed by a bandit attack near her place. Now that her page is clear of the book, she has already begun to clear the B-ranked section of the missing nins. The boy is restless Hokage-sama, he even beat my old record. Indeed he is an interesting individual. I'm following his career with great interest said Geishi before smiling upon seeing the surprised look displayed by Tsunei. According to his file, all the six C-ranked missing nins were killed by him and now he'll pass on to the B-ranked section which is far wider than the C-ranked one. Approximately three to one I'm afraid continued Geishi and still smiled upon seeing that Tsunei had yet to recover from the shock of hearing about Naruto killing six missing nins in such a small period of time. It has been a couple of months since he left to become a hunter nin and Sinead wondered if Naruto would ever come back to the village at least to rest for a while. However, she knew better that even if he did, he wouldn't alert anyone of his presence. And he would come only for supplies and then leave the next day. Sighing in frustration from missing the blonde terribly, Sinead asked the man in front of her who would Naruto go for now that he went to the B-ranked. Geishi figured that Tsunade would want to know who Naruto's targets were so he asked the blonde hunter as to his way of deciding who he would go for first. According to she, he doesn't follow a decided strategy. Instead, he's following the book order, so it's safe to say that the next enemy is the first on the B list called Shurinui Oog. This man is Jounin level ninja with mastery in Sutan ninjutsu and Teijutsu. We should be expecting the man's head anytime now, judging by Shi's period between the last hunt and the next said Aoi to which Tsunade nodded and hoped the blonde would be able to beat this Aoi fellow. Back to Naruto minus. Facing Aoi, Naruto was once again reluctant. The fear of not being able to beat a Jounin level ninja still overwhelmed him, thus breaking his concentration. So, Naruto was doing all he could to dodge the man's furious attacks. What's the matter kid? I thought you came here to beat me shouted Aoi as he delivered a solid punch directly at Naruto's chest, thus sending him straight to the tree. Using the momentum, Naruto flipped his body and landed with his two feet on the tree. While Naruto was analyzing the man's fighting, someone was screaming inside of him. Naruto, you can't keep defending all the time. Look at you. You're afraid of the man in front of you. Why? Asked Kyubi to which Naruto snarled. I never faced a Jounin level shinobi alone Kyubi, I don't know if I can win this fight. Thought Naruto before he heard the fox scream even louder inside his head. Damn imbecile. you faced tons of S-ranked ninjas all your life. Also, after 16 years, how dare you say you're facing this man alone said Kyubi. Earning a surprised and questioned look by Naruto. 
Do you think I would give you the pleasure of leaving you alone? You said it yourself. You and I share this human body. Now use the fear eyes array and beat this man to pieces, shouted Kyubi. Naruto, after hearing this from the fox, smiled a bit and cursed his lack of memory. The fox was right. He wouldn't give the blonde the satisfaction of being left alone for a while and Naruto realized that even after all the hardships in life, the damn fox always stood by him even if he was obliged to. But that's beside the point right now. When Naruto opened his eyes and saw Hoi approaching, Naruto smiled and did some hand seals for Futen K's no hei shi, wind release furious wind jutsu. Instantly, Naruto was revolved with a powerful wind force, thus protecting him of Roy's attack as well as send the man flying. Naruto didn't even let the man land and summon some of Kyubi's chakra before making another set of hand seals for Katan Gaokakir no Jutsu Fire Release, Great Fireball Jutsu. Aoi for his part wondered what animal suddenly bit the hunter Nin to make him react as quickly as he did. The Futen technique was off the hook and the sheer force of the wind was enough to send him flying. When he saw the fireball approaching, the man began to curse this hunter Nin and flipped his body in order to face the incoming fireball. Doing some hand seals for Sutan Sujin Heki no Jutsu Water Release, Water Barrier Jutsu thus stopping the incoming fireball. Upon landing safely on the ground, Aoi looked at the hunter Nin and realized that it wouldn't be good to underestimate this opponent. In the beginning, the hunter Nin was being overwhelmed by his attacks. Out of nowhere, the hunter began to fight better and even managed to use a sequence of pretty tough ninjutsu sequence. Uh, perhaps there is more to this boy than I thought. Great, I could use a challenge, thought Aoi as he once again dropped into his Taijutsu stance and attacked Naruto once more. However, the result of it was quite different since Naruto was attacking as well. During the assault, the man was having difficulty dodging the sword slashes and landing a hit at the blonde. It was as if the hunter Nin transformed somehow. Eventually, Naruto managed to attack Aoi making a long diagonal cut beginning from the man's left shoulder going all the way to his stomach. Needless to say, Aoi screamed in unbearable like he didn't in a while, simply because up until now no hunter Nin managed to get this far. Snarling in rage, Aoi was now losing his temper and according to Kyubi most likely to waste high level of chakra by performing all the techniques he knew. True to the fox's worries, Aoi began with the hand seal sequence and sent a water dragon towards Naruto. The blonde barely managed to avoid the dragon until he saw Bo making another sequence of hand seals. Sutan Teodan no Jutsu Water Release, Large Projectile Jutsu. Once again trusting his reflexes Naruto managed to dodge the water blast to which Aoi snarled even more. Stay still you bastard, I'll kill you even if the last thing I'll do shouted Aoi before once again made hand seals for Sutan Sukoden no Jutsu Water Release, Water Shark Projectile Jutsu. This time the water hit Naruto dead on, which made Aoi to shout in victory until he saw that instead of the hunter Nin's body, a tree log appeared thus getting the hit. At this time Aoi had enough chakra to one more jutsu. Sighing in frustration upon having to use this jutsu, he began a long series of hand signs and shouted Sutan Suishao water release, water collision destruction jutsu. What Naruto saw nearly astounded him. The size of the wave was enough to envelop Kyubi's cage. Finding no way of escaping the tidal wave that was approaching, Naruto decided to charge straight through the wave with his Futen racing gan. At first, Oi smiled upon thinking that the hunter Nin foolishly charged against an A-ranked ninjutsu. However, when he saw the blonde land on the ground, coughing a little bit because of a little bit of water being swallowed, the man cursed the hunter Nin and Konoha from not leaving him the hell alone. Not even leaving Oi time to do anything Naruto summoned some of Kyubi's chakra and enveloped his sword with Katan chakra, Katan and down note Suriji fire release, flame sword jutsu and charged against Oi, performing a swift cut at the man's neck, thus decapitating him. Hopefully, the head was alright and the technique's fire ended up burning the man's body, cutting the time down by half. Upon looking at his first Jounin level victim burning on the floor, Naruto was picturing every move made by both him and Oi. The battle began one-sided with Aoi beating Naruto to the ground. When he gathered confidence in himself Naruto began landing some attacks of his own until he managed to make the deep cut thus hurting Aoi a lot and making him lose his mind in attacking Naruto with all he had. At the end Naruto remembered him charging against the wave with a Futen racing gan and wondered what possessed him to do that. 
Truth be told, Naruto had never tested the elemental racing Gan against other elements, and he surely didn't know what to expect. It was pure luck that the racing Gan managed to open a hole and pass Naruto through thus, escaping the technique. You did well, however you'll need to be more focused on your abilities, if we want to survive the stronger foes. Now, summon that toad of yours and send the man's head. In the meantime, You'll now complete the race and Shuriken said Kyubi to which Naruto nodded before summoning Gamakichi and telling him to deliver the scroll to Tsunade of the leader. After the toad vanished with the scroll, Naruto returned to summoning this three-cage bunshin and begin the creation of his ultimate jutsu. In Konoha minus. Back in Konoha, Geishi and Tsunade were discussing certain aspects considering Naruto's kill method. So far, from what they could see from the heads that were sent, the cup was filled with katan chakra which demonstrated that Naruto somehow was able to create a flame sword. Tsunade almost fell from her chair upon hearing this news from Geishi, but quickly remembered that Kyubi must have taught the boy this particular and yet mysterious jutsu. Suddenly, both sensed someone appearing via summon and smiled upon seeing Gamakichi with a scroll on his mouth. Tsunade Sama, the bro asked me to deliver this scroll. According to him, it contains the first name on the B-ranked list said Gamakichi to which Geishi smiled, and Tsunade frowned at the man from supposedly no Naruto better than her. I appreciate Gamakichi. However, tell Naruto that such a mount will take a while to gather, since it's double from a normal C-ranked. Tell him to send you here in 30 minutes so that we can prepare said Tsunade to which the toad nodded and vanished, leaving Tsunade alone with a smiling Geishi. Okay, you're right. He did send the guy's head just like you said he would now I'm very busy Geishi. Gamakichi will be here shortly and I'll have to send Naruto the money said Tsunade not at all satisfied about saying the man was right. Geishi for his turn smiled even more and bowed before leaving the premises. Damn you Naruto, because of you, now I have to deal with this man thought Tsunade as she slammed a bunch of signed reports for Shizum to take later. With Naruto minus. When Gamakichi arrived to the location. He wasn't prepared to the sight before him. When he saw Naruto, he realized that said blonde was holding what seemed to be a huge ball of energy surrounded by a Fuma shuriken sized white energy, in which the toad assumed it was Fruten Chakra. One another thing was that the toad, although massive in size and weight, was having difficulty keeping his members on the ground. Naruto for his part, upon seeing that the toad was back stopped the technique, and went towards the still stunned toad. It was after a while that Gamakichi woke up from his daydreaming and told Naruto about what Tsunade said. Naruto acknowledged the information and went back to performing his new Fuden Ninjutsu which, although old in theory was in fact new in practice. Naruto and Kyubi thought together of this technique, but it would eventually appear since the Racing Shuriken is identical to the Fuden Racingan, but with more Fuden Chakra enveloping the ball of energy. Now that Naruto achieved the last stage of Fuden manipulation, he was able to create his ultimate jutsu. Once the disc was formed on the Bunshin's head, the clone charged against a mountain and hit it with the technique. The result was as deadly as the technique's appearance. As the technique hit the target, an immense dome of wind chakra erupted, thus not only destroying everything inside, but also Fuden Chakra was responsible for cutting the stones into tiny pieces. After seeing the damage done Naruto smiled upon wondering what this technique could do to an enemy of his upon seeing that the mountain is now almost non-existent. After all this, Naruto landed on the ground in pure exhaustion and rested near one of the remaining trees. He asked either Kyubi or Gamakichi to wake him up in half an hour so that he could send the toad to collect his bounty on Moi's corpse. After said time passed, the toad retrieved the money and Naruto set sailed on his new target. Chapter 7 Counterintelligence The sunlight presented in Konoha and the people were gathering on the streets. The shinobis were already hopping on top of the buildings rushing to their destinations. However, some ninjas didn't need to worry about waking up soon. Those were the shinobis who fulfilled their services inside the village. That was the case of one in Uzuka Hana. As the head of the veterinary center of Konoha, she had to be there every day at 9 a.m. So, she usually wakes up when her dogs call her. Today wasn't any different as one of the triplets jumped to her bed thus waking her up. Opening her eyes, Hannah was aware of one of her dogs waking her up and got up, before looking straight for the window of her bedroom. 
From there, she could see her clan's house and some land of Konoha. After a bark from one of her companions, she turned and smiled at the dog, only to realize that this one was the one who Naruto got to scratch its ears. She still wondered what this was supposed to mean, simply because up until the blonde, no one aside from her family was able to get close to her dogs and even be able to caress its ears. What do you want to tell me? Do you like him? Asked the girl to the dog before said animal barked in response and started licking her. Hannah giggled at the dog's behavior and got her answer. Getting out of the bed, she went to the bathroom to take a bath and then dress up to meet her mother for breakfast. Downstairs, she looked at the table only to see Tsum and Uzuka petting her companion close to the ear. Good morning Ka-san. Slept well. Greeted Hannah as she opened the fridge and grabbed some orange juice before sitting on the table. Tsum looked at her daughter and smiled before saying that her night was okay. Said woman was looking intently at Hannah while she drank the juice and Tsum knew her daughter's curiosity didn't phase one bit. Soon always wondered why her daughter didn't find one person that she liked on a date. Apart from the jerks she dated, so far no one was considerate of her attention. Now, after she returned from that mission with the hunter Nin, she knew what her daughter was thinking about. All Inuzuka women were the same in a way, they all have fantasies of strong men and their strong personalities. That hunter Nin must have caused some serious impressions on her daughter for her to be this curious. Hannah Chan, tell me what's wrong. You look like you have a doubt in your mind, and you can't solve, tell me about it asked Tsum to which Hannah looked at her mother, while wondering if she was this obvious. I don't know mother, I can't take my head off that hunter Nin. He bothers me like no other men ever did. First, he was able to caress one of my triplets like he was one of our own and then when he fought Koromaru's pups, he was careful not to hurt them as in he knew about the owner's feelings towards our companions. Aside from the family, no one ever did that before stated Hannah to which Tsu nodded before smiling from knowing that it was the hunter Nin after all. I admit that shinobi like this is tough to find, but they do exist. You seem very fond of this hunter Nin person. Do I know him? Asked Tsum to which Hannah looked at her mother as if she was afraid of telling the man's identity. I think you do, but the Hokage prohibited me of saying his name, sorry mother said Hannah to which Tsum acknowledged and dismissed the issue of the man's identity. Nonetheless, she saw how said subject was influencing her daughter, so she asked different questions. Well, if Sanate Sama told you that, yes it must be important. Well, tell me more about him. You said he used Fudan Ninjutsu to beat Takashi, right? Asked Tsum to which Hannah nodded. Yes, from what I saw of the technique, it was like a horizontal tornado that went forward and attacked the enemy, just like our family's Gitsuga, but definitely stronger. Also, I sense traces of Katan Chakra so I guess he's proficient in both areas of Ninjutsu. Also, he seemed to have a large chakra capacity, since he was able to summon 50 cage bunshins and wasn't even phased explained Hannah before hearing a whistle in amazement from Tsum. Okay, so he's good in ninjutsu, but how about close contact? Asked Tsum to which Hannah answered saying he was also proficient with a katana. So, if you what you said is true, then he is at least down in level. Mastery of two elements and proficiency in kenjutsu, he has all the attributes of a jounin. Now, be serious with me Hannah-chan, I'm sure you're not thinking of his abilities simply because while he seems like a good shinobi this village produced one of the best in the elemental nations. What is it that you are curious about? Asked Tsum, now trapping Hannah who in turn wondered how well her mother knew her if she was able to read her face expression so easily. Nonetheless, this was a question she couldn't answer without breaking Naruto's identity so she used the excuse of how late she was and said goodbye to her mother, although surprised at her daughter's behavior couldn't help but smile at seeing her daughter having strong feelings for someone. At least, soon would get some answers with the Hokage. With Naruto minus. After waking up in the woods, Naruto went to the lake nearby to fresh up a little bit. He wasn't interested in finding a hotel to stay the night from missing the woods a little bit. Since you've been sleeping, I came with ways to improve your training and I'm proud to say that I found the perfect exercise. Also, I thought of how we could improve the strength of your food in ninjutsu said Kyubi not even bothering to greet Naruto, 
not that he was expecting any coming from the fox. Morning to you, as well fox. Didn't expect you to be so enthusiastic this morning said Naruto to which Kibi snarled at the blonde for not accepting help from the elders. Damn brat, one of these days, you'll be in trouble, and I won't help you said Kibi to which Naruto laughed and replied. Yes, right, like you want someone to kill us. Besides, it's not that I don't appreciate your help, it's just that it's a little weird to talk about training only after waking up said Naruto as he went back to his camp. Anyway, I'm thinking of your Futen technique called Futen Kaze no Heishi, when release furious wind jutsu and the restriction said technique does to your body movements. My idea is for you to move even with the wind field around you so that your body becomes adjusted to more strength. Also, I was thinking of a way to power up your Futen techniques by using my chakra explained Kyubi to which Naruto considered the idea over some breakfast which consisted of only fruits and a glass of water. How can I use your chakra to use Futen ninjutsu when I can only use katan ninjutsu with it? Asked Naruto as he finished his meal and went to clean his stuff. It seems you forgot that everyone has both normal and elemental type chakra. If you didn't, then you would only be able to do one type of ninjutsu. Now, you could fuse your elemental chakra with my normal chakra thus enhancing the technique's strength stated Kyubi. Naruto did acknowledge that idea, but for now he just wanted to appreciate some free time and take a look at the bingo book. Scratching an X mark to Moy's file, he flicked the page for the next one. It seemed that the person was already enlisted as a missed shinobi so he was out of Kanaha's jurisdiction. Stupid old book well, moving on. The next one was right here in Fire Country, but he was very far from Naruto's location which could take a while of traveling. The guy's name was Haidashi Seichiki and an ex jounin of Konoha, not to mention that he was a master in Reitan Ninjutsu. According to the book, he was charged with stealing some high-ranked and also restricted techniques from the Hokage's office, but managed to escape before execution. Naruto felt a bit ashamed that he kind of did the same thing even if he was tricked by Mizuki at the time. Personally, I'd prefer you looked at another technique instead of the cage bunshin. Although it serves well for training now, you surely got reliant on said technique, and would often get your ass kicked said Kyubi to which Naruto snarled at his inmate. What? Is the truth isn't it? Cage bunching and racing Gan were your only attacks. It was disappointing in a way for my vessel to be as weak as you were back then. You managed to learn two or ranked techniques, but you've never knew each technique's purpose said Kyubi not at all minding that he was talking about what happened four years ago. Whatever damn fur ball, that's in the past. I'm different now. Let's train a little bit before we travel towards our new target said Naruto as he focused some hand seals, and his furious wind technique was all around him. In Konoha minus. Close to the gate, a red-haired woman breathed a little bit before looking up to the village she dreamed of returning to. After leaving Naruto, Kira took quite a while to return to her old village simply because she was afraid of what would happen once she did. She didn't know anyone who was still alive and the only person she could seek was her cousin Anko. However, Kira didn't know about Anko's whereabouts or even where to find her inside the village. She knew, of course, that Anko didn't leave the village because her name wasn't in the bingo book. After signing some dismissal papers at the gate, she entered the village and began scouting up the place. She noticed the fifth head on the Hokage monument and wondered if Sinead would give her a place at the hospital just like Naruto said she would. After a little bit of walking, her stomach grumbled from hunger. She knew only one place that she could eat, and that's where she went. Upon entering, though, she saw what appeared to be a woman in a trench coat and purple hair, sitting on the counter while talking to the bartender. When she approached the counter, the person's face was visible and Kira was happy to find Anko. Anko-chan, is it really you? I missed you so much screamed Kira earning the attention of the special Jounin who smiled upon recognizing her cousin. The girls grabbed a table and chose the time to talk about all the time Kira was away from the village. The talk was all fine until a certain blonde came up and Anko was surprised. Wait. You don't mean to tell me that you also made love to Naruto, Kira-chan screamed Anko to which Kira smiled in response. What? It's not like you haven't as well. Besides, 
He is very handsome not to mention that body of his said Kira as she was daydreaming of her time with the blonde. Anko, however, was confused. Although she enjoyed sex with Naruto, she was certain his body, although fairly developed, wasn't enough to set a woman on edge. Upon questioning Kira though, she told Anko that Naruto's body was ripped and strong, thus telling Anko that he must have trained to develop his body up to the level he is right now. Anko was now imagining her having sex with the changed Naruto on top of her and immediately, a little drop of blood came out of her nose. Kira told Anko about a job at the hospital that Naruto promised her, so she would meet the Hokage. After a while of talking, Anko told Kira that she could stay with her until she found a place to stay. Kira appreciated and said that she did have to meet the Hokage shortly and that she would meet Anko back at her place tonight. At the Hokage's office minus. Tanabe Shizun and Sakura were at the Hokage's office, discussing about a patient at the hospital that needed some sensitive surgery. Their discussion was pretty much over when Sakura turned to Tsunade. Tsunade Sama, where do you think Naruto's mission will finish? It's been a while and he didn't come back yet, asked Sakura, catching Tsunade by surprise since she didn't expect her apprentice to ask about the blonde. That's up to Jiryu to know, he is with him at the moment. Last I heard Naruto was visiting some of our spy network near T-Country. He is scheduled to meet all of them before returning however even I don't know the extent of his spy network so it could take a while explained Sinead to which Sakura nodded and looked down a bit. She missed the blonde, although not for second reasons. Sakura never was much interested in Naruto in that way, but she always considered him a friend. With him out of the village, Sakura didn't have anyone to talk to. Ino is hanging with her team and Tenten -ten with her. She doesn't involve much with Hinata, so Naruto would be the only one left to talk to. Oh well, guess I'll just want him to come back. I have to go for the hospital Tsunade Sama said Sakura before she left the office. Shizun and Tsunade were worried for a second about Sakura, but they all knew she wasn't infatuated with Naruto in that way. Tsunade was about to dismiss Shizun when a knock on the door was heard. Greetings Tsunade Sama, I have an appointment with you over a position at the hospital my name is Kira present Kira to which Tsunade nodded before greeting said person. She now remembered that this was the name Naruto mentioned on his ladder a while ago. Right Kira, I remember you now. Tell me about your experience in the medic field said Tsunade to which Kira nodded and began explaining. She initiated telling about what drove her to train as a medic nin and how much she worships said position. After that, she explained how she ended up becoming a hunter nin and how she became the physicist responsible for taking care of their mental health. Tsunaid was impressed with said person's curriculum and liked her. Kira-san, I'm sure you'll do fine at the hospital, you start tomorrow morning. Now I understand you came across as a Maki Naruto, haven't you? Asked Sane to which said girl just nodded. Yes, he was the last person I examined before I returned here. I actually appreciated what he did for me and I also appreciate the position Hokage-sama said Kira to which Sane nodded, but asked about the blonde a little bit. Naruto's physical condition is 100% and the job doesn't seem to affect him much. His skills as a hunter nin are pretty good from his file and how he managed to enter the place we met almost undetected. In fact, if I didn't know much, he would pass right in front of me and I wouldn't know he was even there in the first place said Kira to which the Hokage noted and smiled. I guess you made quite an impression on him. Although you're not the first one he helped, he only does that to precious people. Tell me what happened between you two out there? Asked the Hokage with most innocence, but she ended up cornering Kira a little bit. Ah. I'm not in liberty to discuss this type of things Hokage-sama stated Kira, although highly afraid of telling something that the Hokage didn't want to hear. Tsunade for her part got her answer, so she didn't press the matter further. Sometimes, she acted more like a family to Naruto than his Hokage, so to her seeing that Kira's relations with the blonde, did send her on edge a little bit. Nonetheless, his personal life was his to choose as he sees fit. Also, this Kira person didn't seem someone who would like to date Naruto anytime soon, even though they did have sex. It was just a one-night stand after all. With Naruto minus. 
Fudenship or no Hage Shi, wind release, furious hurricane jutsu. In seconds, the wind that gathered around Naruto transformed into a hurricane and was growing immensely. After Naruto tried his wind restriction training, he decided to use some of Kyubi's chakra to increase the strength of his Fuden techniques. Upon using it with his furious wind technique, he found that the technique was double in strength and destruction, thus changing the name from a simple wind to hurricane. I was right after all. With my chakra and your techniques, the power of it grows tenfold said Kyubi as with Naruto's eyes he saw what remained of the river. Yes, however this technique requires a lot of control over mine and your chakra at the same time. It's tough as hell. I can't use this in battle quite yet, said Naruto to which the fox nodded. Don't worry though. We'll be practicing this technique until you manage to do it without much concentration. Now I believe you've got a new victim to hunt said Kyubi, remembering the blonde of his task as a hunter nin. Naruto grabbed his clothes, strapped the sword holster on his back, and set foot on the trees in order to reach his destination. Upon reaching, he would find a place to stay and scout the area. Along the way, Naruto found some people traveling down on the ground, and he even managed to find some familiar faces. Shikamaru, Ino and Chouchi were walking around on what seemed to be a mission. Luckily for him though, he wasn't spotted. Although he wanted nothing more to just talk to them, he knew that wasn't a possibility right now. No one was supposed to know about his hunter Nin position, since all of them were told about his fake mission to find Jiria's spy network. Looking forward once again, he changed subjects and maintained his course of action. Unbeknownst to him though, Shikamaru knew his real mission and also knew his position. You changed Naruto, I almost didn't notice you're there. I wonder how you are doing my friend, thought Shikamaru as he joined his team once again. Why you stopped Shikamaru? Asked Ino to which Shikamaru shrugged saying that he thought they were being followed. Back to Naruto, he was already halfway through. The man's position was on a small town, but Naruto knew it because it was that city where Jiryu taught him some knowledge of Genjutsu. In Konoha Minus. Inside Sanade's office was Kirena and Kakashi brought a report on Konoha's supposed rat. The two Jounins were in charge of investigating about a possibility of a rat amongst them. So far, Kakashi had some suspicions as to who could it be, but he wasn't entirely sure. He and Kirena were given access to the mission's archive in order to see how aware was their enemies of Kanaha's activities. Kirena managed to link something with Nis, Danzao's secret organization activities, however she found any 100% reliable lead to Danzao, so she thought better than push it forward. Tanade also had news from Jiryu who had information from his spy network about someone leaking important information of Konoha to foreigners, but he couldn't identify what that information was or who was the rat. Tanate Sama, so far neither of us managed to find any reliable lead to our rat. Kirena here found some links to Danzao's organization, but other than that, we haven't found anything worthy of mentioning reported Kakashi to which Tanade nodded and thought for a while. I have my suspicions about Dan Zhao, but I can't put Anbu to spy on him without having at least a valuable clue of his involvement stated Tsunade. Kirena thought for a while and offered an idea. Tsunade Sama, seeing that the rat's target is Akatsuki, we have to check Naruto's documents and his mission reports. Of course, they have to know about our defenses, but also they are to follow Naruto's movements all the time. Also, since Naruto didn't do any B2 or ranked missions, the below ranked ones are accessible to everyone that has a Chunin rank or above. We could check those and also see who checks said documents in the last three years explained Kirena, earning thinking pose from Kakashi and Sinead. I doubt Dan Zhao would be looking into C ranked mission reports, Kirena. Either way, it's good to check those as well. Maybe this is Dan Zhao's thinking. No one would be suspicious of a person of his status checking on C-ranked mission reports and informing Akatsuki on Naruto's whereabouts ordered Tsunade before Kakashi and Kirena bowed and left for the door. Seems like Dan Zhao is once again acting on the shadows. With Naruto minus. After arriving at the designated city, Naruto checked in the hotel and left some stuff inside his room. After that, he left to scout the city for his next victim. Seitsuki's dressing was outrageous, not to mention the man's stupid haircut. 
He was unmistakable, so either he was plain stupid and lucky to escape the hunter nins or he killed them all. In any case, Naruto had to find him and see for himself what this man was all about. After some time of walking around, he found his target. He was seating inside a dango restaurant and talking to the waitress. Naruto was using a henge so by look alone, was impossible to determine if he was a hunter nin or not. Also, since the man was far, he couldn't sense Naruto's chakra. However, the man was a jounin and his instincts far surpassed the need to feel or see someone to know that he was being followed. However, Naruto's mission wasn't to spy on him so he returned to his hotel and grabbed his uniform and sword. Getting back, he made his figure visible to his enemy who in turn only laughed at yet another hunter to dispose of. Hideshi Seichiki from the crimes against Konoha, you are to be eliminated said Naruto but the man only smiled. Eliminated. I thought you offered first, the option of me coming back willingly and my sentence would be reduced said Seichiki, before seeing Naruto grabbing his sword. I just presumed you already heard this and declined, so I didn't feel the need to add that to my speech. I thought you wouldn't mind though. But guess I was wrong well, if you really wanted to come back, you should have said so said Naruto as he saw Seichiki pointing to a direction for the hunter nin to follow. Naruto obliged and followed him. Although the man was a criminal, I guess he wasn't a complete lunatic. When both warriors stopped, Naruto began to scan his surroundings. I thought I was clear with the last hunter nin who thought that he could take me on a fight. I wanted to be left alone said Seichiki to which Naruto nodded. Sorry, it's my job. It's nothing personal. You understand that right asked Naruto, earning a laugh from the man who was surprised that this hunter nin wasn't saying things like crimes against Konoha or being a threat to the village. Well, it seems that you are different than the others. Now, let's see if your fighting is better than all of those who came trying to kill me said Seichiki as he dropped into an instance. Naruto, this man is dangerous. I can feel the electricity being gathered around his body minus said Kyubi to which Naruto nodded and became ready to use Furuten Ninjutsu to counteradak. True to Kyubi's warnings, Seichiki made some hand seals and screamed Raytan John lightning release false darkness jutsu. Immediately a huge lightning bolt charged Naruto, who didn't have other option besides dodging and throwing some kunais at the target. With a kunai of his own Seichiki was able to deflect all the incoming kunais and once again sent a lightning bolt attack at Naruto. The blonde dodged yet again and approached Seichiki with his sword for close contact fighting. Naruto figured that his choice of jutsus Seichiki was a long range fighter, but he was wrong. However, Seichiki proved to be just as efficient with his teijutsu since he was evading all of Naruto's sword attacks and still was able to fight back. It seems he is just as effective in close ranged. So we just have to switch to long range, right? Said Kyubi to which Naruto nodded and jumped backwards while making some hand seals. Fuden de top of wind release, great breakthrough jutsu. The huge gust of wind appeared out of nowhere and sent Seichiki flying. Not wanting to let the man rest, Naruto channeled some of Kyubi's chakra and made some hand seals. Katan Zukoku, fire release, Head mincing pain jutsu. Seichiki looked at the ever growing fire and used a substitution jutsu, barely escaping the incoming fire. However, luckily to Naruto, the man's arm was burned from not escaping in time. You're good, I tell you that. Quite interesting sequence of jutsu you got there, said Seichiki, as he fell into his stance. I appreciate the compliment. However, we are far from over so excuse me if I don't feel like talking said Naruto as he once again made some hand seals for Katan career end in fire release, fire dragon missile jutsu. After Naruto exhaled the huge fire missile Seichi snarled and made some quick hand seals for Raytan Denkaskasha, lightning release, lightning barrier jutsu. Meanwhile, big white haired man was passing by and saw huge chakra being used nearby. Speeding around the town, he got to the battlefield only to see a hunter nin from Konoha doing some hand seals and exhaling a huge fire missile, and his opponent using what appeared to be a barrier made of lightning to protect himself from the fire attack. He knew Naruto was a hunter nin, but seeing that the man made a katan ninjutsu, he knew Naruto wasn't the man. However, he remembered the blonde saying that Kyubi had a fire affinity. Suddenly, both opponents began making hand seals at the same time and finishing at the exact same time. 
Rayton Rakurai no Jutsu Lightning Release, Thunderbolt Jutsu. Wooten K's no Yeba Wind Release, Wind Sword Jutsu. Just as the two elements were about to shock with each other, both opponents were surprised that they passed and now as the sword charged Seichiki, the Thunderbolt charged against Naruto. Focusing as much of Kyobi's chakra as he could manage, Naruto evaded the Thunderbolt, but his arm suffered the worst as the electric current scratched his skin which was enough to send enough electricity inside Naruto's body to make him scream in agony. Seichiki though, wasn't lucky and the wind sword hit him right in the chest, thus making a deep and fatal cut. The man was dead before he hit the floor. Naruto, though, was still suffering the power of the attack. Calm down Naruto, I'm eliminating the current from the body. Old still for a second shouted Kyubi as he was using his chakra to cure Naruto's organs. Easy for you to say, you damn fox. I ch ch ch. Screamed Naruto inside his mind and outside, he was grinding his teeth. His mask was shattered and his face was visible so Jiryu was able to see his student and rushed to his side immediately. Naruto, are you okay? Asked Jiryu while tending to the blonde's arms. Naruto, although wasn't concerned to seeing his teacher. Where is my mask? No one can know where I am. Said Naruto while still grinding his teeth. Don't worry about that, I'll take care of you said Jiryu as he dressed Naruto with a coat and placed the coat's hoot thus covering his face. The blonde got up almost barely and went to check on Seichiki. Naruto was thanking Kami that his attack landed simply because he would be dead otherwise. Taking his sword, Naruto cut Seichiki's head and then he burned the man's body, before locking the man's head inside a scroll. While this was happening, Jiryu was finding hard to believe that Naruto of all people was so brutally efficient on the job. Jiryu knew some hunter nins, but the pervert knew how they behaved. Naruto, though, was 100% different than all of them. However, seeing Naruto forgetting about being almost shocked to death and deal with what he had to do was unnerving. Naruto for his part summoned Gamakichi and asked him to take the scroll to the hunter nin commander to which the toad nodded and vanished. What are you doing here Jiria? Asked the blonde while he kneeled on the ground and holds his damaged arm a little bit. Would you believe if I said that I was just passing by? I see you're taking the hunter nin job seriously, Naruto stated to Ryu to which Naruto nodded and looked at his shattered mask. Yes, I should avoid Rayton users for now. Being on the receiving end of a Rayton jutsu hurts like a bitch, and now I had to ask for a new mask for the commander. Are you staying longer or just passing by? Said Naruto as he got up and adjusted the hood so no one would know he was there. I was just passing through. I'm heading to river country to meet one of my spies. He contacted me and said he held some valuable information for me. Are you okay on your own? Asked Jiryu to which Naruto nodded. I can take care of myself thanks. I've been taking care of myself for a while now. I guess I can manage said Naruto as he grabbed the scroll Gamakichi returned and grabbed his new mask and money of the hunt. After Naruto put his new mask he looked at Jiria as in trying to find something to say to the man. However, he didn't have any. In fact, the blonde couldn't think of a reason to keep talking to the pervert. Jiria for his part eyed Naruto warily and wondered why he was so uncomfortable, when suddenly Naruto turned and said goodbye to the man before vanishing and leaving Jiria alone to wonder. The Sanin was flabbergasted by the blonde's choice of action and still wondered why the hell Naruto was avoiding him. He knew of Naruto's fear that Akatsuki would use others to get to him, but no one would go after the Sanin, so the blonde didn't need to worry about that. Nevertheless, Naruto was even stronger than before if what Jiryu witnessed. Using two affinities would grant someone the rank of Jounin in Konoha and seeing Naruto beating what appeared to be an ex Jounin. The Sanin didn't doubt the blonde was training profusely. The pervert was now anxious to see what the blonde came up with on his own. He could have finally completed the racing gan, if Kakashi's statement was precise. Back with Naruto, he entered the shower in order to clean the wound made by the lightning attack. At the moment, he appreciated having Kyubi with him to cure him from the excruciating pain seconds after the attack. For a minute, there all Naruto could feel was pain and he wondered how could he protect himself in case of similar attacks in the future. In case you forgot about my idea, 
we considered creating a new technique called Futen Keizutaku Wind Release Wind Shield Jutsu. It would definitely protect you from Rayton attacks, said Kyubi as Naruto looked at the water coming from the shower in wonder. I guess I have no choice then. Until I'm able to create this new technique, it's safe that I avoid fighting more missing nins. Up to now, all the jutsus that we trained for were exclusively offensive ones. We need to focus now on defensive ones, do you perhaps have one defensive katan to teach me? Asked Naruto to which Kyubi nodded, but there was a catch. I do actually. However, is a demonic jutsu, and could only be used with my chakra. It's called Katan Kekai Hidokuro no Tate Fire Barrier, Fire Skull Shield Jutsu. It's pretty easy to make, but extremely taxing chakra-wise. After making the needed hand seals, you'd slam both hands on the ground and release the molded chakra explained Kyubi to which Naruto nodded and asked to be taught. Rest for a while tomorrow will begin both jutsu said Kyubi to which Naruto nodded and got out of the bathroom before going to bed and rest for the day. Even if the pain subsided, Naruto's body was far from healed, so Kyubi needed Naruto to sleep so he could fully heal his body and protect his inner organs from the shock inside his body. Next day minus. When the sunlight illuminated Naruto's bedroom, the blonde wondered how much time he slept, seeing that when he went to bed, the sun was just about to say the previous day. When he got up, though, he was expecting to feel at least the last bits of pain. However, the pain was completely gone, and it was like the pain never existed. You can thank me for that. The reason you slept so much was because I was using my regeneration chakra to heal all your body and organs. Now, you are as good as new said Kyubi to which Naruto nodded and dressed up. Okay, then. Let's train a little bit said Naruto as he placed his mask on and left the hotel only to meet with Dari waiting for him. Well hello there Hunter San, I was wondering when you would be waking up. I need to talk with you for a second said Jiriya to which Naruto sighed and nodded before following Jiriya. As they were walking Jiriya couldn't help but notice that Naruto managed to increase his muscles while training and he wondered what influenced his body to grow like this. When they stopped, Jiriya turned to become face to face, well masked with Naruto. Okay, Jiriya what is that you wanted to speak with me? Asked Naruto not at all wanting to prolong this conversation than it needed to be. Show some respect brat, no t only I outrank you, but also I'm older than you shouted Jiriya to which Naruto shrugged it off. If all you wanted to say was that, there wasn't any need of even having this conversation, what is it? Asked Naruto once again, enforcing more his irritation in the end. Fine, first of all, I'm curious as to why are you being so distant towards me? I was expecting a much warmer reception coming from you questioned Jiriya to which Naruto grinned a bit and stated that Jiriya was expecting to see someone else instead of him. What would you expect of someone who's wearing a mask? Besides, the one you came to know no longer exists. Next question inquired Naruto, earning a popping vein from Jiriya's forehead, but he chose subjects. Okay, how did you manage to use Katan and Futen Ninjutsu? Those two are opposite forces for a reason, asked Jiryu, but only to confirm his suspicions. It's simple really. I have Futen as my element, and you know who has Katan as his element. Upon using his chakra, I can use Katan ninjutsu explained Naruto, confirming Jiryu's suspicions. I'm also here to report of the success of the mission so far. As of now, you're traveling across snow country to meet one of my spies and said man informed me that he spotted two men with Akatsuki robes wandering around the area which mean that someone is informing them of your whereabouts. As of right now, we have a task force back in Konoha in order to discover this rat and arrest him for good. I was going to tell you to continue with hiding from their traces, but I'm sure you already got the handle reported Jiryu, earning the nod of the hunter Nin. I wasn't aware that someone was informing Akatsuki of my whereabouts, but it's good to know that your counterintelligence also served this purpose. I appreciate your help in all this Jiryu san and hope that I can train hard enough so that upon encountering my enemies, I'll be strong enough to beat them. For now, though, I'll be training against ex jounins Right now, I'm about to add two defensive jutsus to my list said Naruto to which Jiryu was interested and asked if he could tag along. Naruto didn't have a problem, so they went to the clearing that he fought against Seichiki. Once at the clearing, 
Naruto summoned close to 20 cage bunshins and explained them that Kyubi would explain his jutsu. When Jiriya questioned his training method, Naruto explained that Kyubi's conscience is divided among the clones, so that he can explain the jutsu's theory to the clones, while gets to attempt his new futon ninjutsu. Jiriya was impressed with said method and immediately wondered how much stronger would Naruto be if he used this method on their training trip. Duri spent some time with the real one watching how he attempted to create a wind barrier by circulating wind chakra around his body. Surely, the first attempts were futile, but after some time Naruto was already able to maintain the wind circulating around him. Now he only had to expand the technique to cover his whole body and his technique was ready to use. True to his wonderings, the next attempt was a success. The wind was surrounding around Naruto's body, fully protecting him for harm. When he looked to the clones, though, his eyes practically left the respective sockets. The technique the clones were attempting seemed to be a barrier that came out of the ground, consisted of numerous burning skeletons. Being a Sanin, Dori prided himself of knowing all fire techniques that exists in the elemental nations, however this one was new even to him. Naruto looked at the white-haired man and explained that was a demonic jutsu created by the fox himself. I was starting to wonder if I was going senile for a moment there. So, this is Kyuppi's attack, huh? Asked Duria as he was studying the fire barrier in front of him and touched one of the skeletons with his finger, but yanked it soon after, thus avoiding a burned hand. Tell the pervert, the technique's temperature is beyond what humans can stand and should he landed his whole hand, he wouldn't be faster enough to save his hand said Kyuppi to which Naruto acknowledged and passed on the information. After Naruto dismissed the clones, the technique's information returned to him and then he turned to Jiryu who was smiling at the blonde even though the pervert knew Naruto was a changed man. I'm surprised at your growth. Truth be told, I didn't expect you to reach this level so quickly. I think I'm going now, but bear in mind that as of now, Akatsuki are way out of your league. Keep training and we'll talk more in the future perhaps when I see that you matched Orochimaru's henchman Kabuto's level. You should then be able to take on a Hakatsuki member, albeit the weakest of them all. Be safe Naruto, and don't forget to use the toads in case you need help. Use them to call me if needed be, and I'll come to help you said Jiryu before leaving towards his destination. Naruto for his part watched the man leave and nodded in response. Yes it will take a while for that to happen Jiryu, but at least I get to fight the B-ranked missing nins for a while and get stronger. Kabuto's level is the same as Kakashi's, so that means I have to be better than Kakashi Sensei. While I know that Kakashi is way stronger than Kabuto, the man is slippery like a snake. Thought Naruto, as Kyubi manifested. Snakes are bunch of cowards. They wait for you to turn your back so that they can attack. Without the element of surprise, they have nothing. When the time comes and Orochimaru is our enemy, he won't know what hit him shouted Kyubi to which Naruto nodded. Orochimaru is an S-ranked missing nin, same as Itachi. Sasuke is considered an A-ranked. We'll have waited a while before fighting them. However, when the time comes, we'll sure be ready for them, thought Naruto as Kyubi acknowledged. Alright, now that the pervert is gone, we can train for real. Summon 10 cage bunchins, and let's do some sword sparring ordered Kyubi to which Naruto nodded and made the peculiar hand seal, before grabbing his sword and attacked his enemies. With Akatsuki minus. After seeing Haydn and Kakuzu returning without the Kyubi vessel, Pine was very irritated. He knew Haydn would screw things up, but Kakuzu was the elite of the elite, and to see him fail of all people was the exception. The Akatsuki knew of Naruto's mission to meet Jiria's spy network from a spy they had inside Konoha. However, when they approached his designated spot where he would be, Akatsuki couldn't find trace of the boy. If Jiria was with him, chances are that the man is protecting him by covering his tracks like a pro. In that case, Akatsuki couldn't hope to find Naruto anytime soon. Jiria achieved the rank of Sanin for a reason and although Akatsuki could take him with two members, his evasion abilities were top-notch. Haydn, it's most unfortunate that you failed me yet again. I expected this from Haydn, but not from you said Pine to which Haydn snarled at the leader, but Kakuzu maintained his cool. It seems we arrived late and the Jinchuyuriki wasn't there anymore. 
Our sources in Konoha stated that he would reach river country tomorrow, so we will be waiting for him. Even if the Sanandria is helping him, I doubt he could take on two of us said Kakuzu to which Pine nodded and agreed with his assessment. Very well, you two should leave right away for river country. Be wary of Jiryu though. I wouldn't be surprised if he already knew both your abilities and already knew of a way to counter. Try not to engage him for now, if you manage to take the Kyubi brat without having to fight him, good. If not, return to the base immediately ordered Pine, before he turned to the other members. Itachi and Kaizam, you two are to find the four-tailed demon. He is the next seeing that Dedera managed to capture the Sandy. This meeting is adjourned until I say so. Haiden, Kakuzu, I advise both of you not to fail me anymore. I was lenient this time, but I can't promise to be the next time said Pine before his image vanished. Huh, I swear I'm going to kill that arrogant piece of shit shouted Haiden before Kakuzu reprimanded his partner and began walking away, heading to river country. Little did they know, though, that a trap awaited them. With Hannah minus. After closing the clinic, Hannah and the triplets were walking back to her compound. It was rather boring day with only a few checkups and minor surgeries. In fact, today was just like any other day. The only difference was after her mission with Naruto, the blonde occupied her mind all day, and the memories varied between seeing him fight and having fantasies about him. It was a good thing Hannah managed to hide her sexual behavior from the public, otherwise it would be tough to walk around Konoha. As she was walking, her eyes fixed on a friend of hers that happened to graduate the same year. Oheyo oh, Anko-chan. How are you doing these days? Asked Hannah gaining the attention of Anko since she turned and faced the Inuzuka Chunin. Hi Hannah, I'm fine and you? I heard that you went on a mission with the Hunter Nin last week. How was it? Asked Anko, earning a suspicious glare from Hannah. She remembered the Hokage saying that no one was supposed to know of Naruto's real identity. It was okay, with the hunter's help our clan managed to retrieve two of our most prized pups. Sadly, though, the hunted was my uncle, but I was glad to see the hunter nin beating the hell out of him before giving the lethal blow reported Hannah, earning a whistle from Anko who was surprised to see a hunter nin finally cleaning the bingo book. Finally, someone with skills out there, the bingo book was getting quite thick. At least, now that this hunter nin is cleaning out the missing nins, not only the book will diminish, but it will serve as a lesson for the ones who are planning on escaping in the future said Anko to which Hannah nodded, and silently smiled as they were talking about Naruto. I wonder though, if you know who this guy is. I've only heard rumors of his appearance and all, but wanted to know who he is asked Anko though lying to Hannah, since she knew it was Naruto, simply because of all the hunter nins she knew only he had the balls to face ex Jounins and managing to deliver a killing blow. Also she was teasing Hannah, simply because Anko talked with Kirena who in turn explained that Hannah already knew of Naruto, but she wasn't supposed to tell anyone. Hannah for her part cursed Anko and wondered if that smile on her face was an indication that she was tricking Hannah into telling a secret. I wonder if that smile on your face is any indication that you're only teasing me Anko-chan. I wonder if you by chance already know who the hunter Nin is and is just playing with me, said Hannah to which Anko just scowled at the girl for ruining all the fun of things. So you already know who he is as well. It's not hard to figure out since the rumor all said he is blonde, so apart from Sanate Sama, the only one with blonde hair could only be him said Hannah to which Anko nodded. I happen to wonder what happened in that mission between you and him, a uh, Hannah Chan. If I didn't know any better, it seems you are quite fond of speaking about him. As to why I wonder. Asked Anko, now cornering the Inuzuka woman. I happen to know for a fact, that his body is to dream for and I happen to sometimes imagine how he would behave in bed. Asked Anko innocently, but with a sexual remark. However, her plan was a success when she saw Hannah showing light shades of pink on her cheeks. Blushing, aren't we? I guess you already imagined him like that, haven't you Hannah Chan? Teased Anko as she used her finger and caressed Hannah's chin a little bit. With Naruto minus. After settling down a bit, Naruto picked his bingo book and crossed Seichi's face. Considering his initial fright of fighting Jounin level ninjas, 
he already managed to beat two Jounins, and he knew some of the rest were just recently promoted Jounins and others were given the rank based on either chakra capacity or specific technique. Yes, I doubt the little Uchiha would be considered a ranked without his Dijutsu. Unlucky for him though, he won't be able to see our movements because of the mask said Kyubi to which Naruto nodded. Turning the page, Naruto was surprised by seeing this man yet again. It was the third time Naruto had to face the man and frankly, the blonde was getting tired of facing this man. It's like he never learned his lesson. Well, I guess I'll just have to kill him then, thought Naruto as he eyed the picture of the one who told him of Kyubi's existence. Tuji Mizuki, we meet yet again. Chapter 8 Finding the Rat After seeing Mizuki's face in the bingo book, Naruto closed it and got up. The man was stupid enough to remain within Fire Country's territory, even though he tried escaping two times already. Surprisingly enough Mizuki was considered a Jounin level ninja, even if he was a Chunin at the time he betrayed Konoha. Correct if I'm wrong, but this Mizuki wasn't the guy who experimented on Orochimaru's potion, thus losing the ability to manipulate chakra said Kyubi to which Naruto nodded. Yes you're right. However, we don't know what happened to him after that time. Maybe someone healed the effects or something. The blonde looked around a while and saw that he was positioned in a clear place thus being able to train some more, before initiating his hunt on Mizuki. After all, it wouldn't be fair to appear before the man and not see the look on pure horror on his face when he figures out Naruto, once more stopped him with a superior technique. Summoning a group of cage bunchins, Naruto took his sword and began fighting against his clones. Equals 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 with three equals equals equals. The pervert was seen drinking some sake and eating some dango. Even though it was clouded today, the pervert was smiling which meant that today would be interesting to say the least. Today would be the time where his counterintelligence mission will be responsible for taking out two Akatsuki members altogether. Duri presumed that the ones that were located near Snow Country would once again search for Naruto in River Country since the pervert happened to inform Konoha of his fake whereabouts just so that Haydn and Kakuzu comes and fall right into the trap carefully elaborated by both Duriya and the Toads. Duriya was so trapped inside his own wonderings that he failed to see that the waitress came asking him if he wanted anything more thus waking the man from his daydreaming. Well, yes my dear, I was hoping to invite a beautiful woman like you for some dinner later tonight, whispered Jiriya closely to the girl's ears, making the young girl blush from the remark so much that she used a napkin she was holding and covered her face in order to hide her red face, before rushing back to the kitchen. Jiriya laughed out loud about the girl's antics, and immediately an idea popped inside his mind as to an update to his new book. Some people called him a bloody pervert, or the entire woman population. However, Jiriya either didn't care if became amused by receiving said nickname. Actually, Jiriya's peeping activity served two purposes. One was filling his old mind with dirty ideas and passing them to his books thus increasing his economy and the other was important intel. Come to speak of it, some of Jiriya's spies happened to be disguised hookers. According to the pervert, a hooker has the ability of knowing everything from a man just by swinging her hips in a sexual manner and teasing men. Also, since all of them were either drunk or drugged, opening their mouth to speak wasn't a problem. Getting up, he left money on the table and screamed to let the waitress know where the money was. Right now, he needed to go visit his spy a few blocks from his position and ask what information the man has for him. Walking around, Jiria's mind wandered back to his first blonde student and the repercussions that transformed Naruto into one of the most efficient hunter nins to ever use the mask. Duryu always knew that the hunter nin position were dedicated to not so experienced shinobi who were better off hunting some missing nins and trying to help Konoha the best way they could, which wasn't much in the end since the bingo book was getting thicker, and the hunter nins were being killed one by one. Actually, the only one good enough to be considered the elite was the now hunter nin commander Uzuti Geishi. However, where Orochimaru is insane, Geishi is vicious. In fact, Duryu once, remembered witnessing the man doing his job once. But instead of a swift kill Geishi pretty much mutilated every part of the enemy's body, before remembering to burn the corpse. While Naruto's kill isn't like Geishi's, Jiryu was wondering about what would be like for Naruto in the future. Being a hunter nin meant to kill and kill more. 
The blonde wouldn't be doing anything different for quite a while and the thought of seeing a bloodthirsty Naruto walking around Konoha was unnerving to say the least. Even though Jiryu felt Naruto's change in behavior, the pervert couldn't help but smile at the same impatience and disrespect for Jiryu's position which meant that even after a high number of kills, Naruto still kept a presumably normal behavior. Now as to the boy's skills growing leaps and bounds, Jiryu wondered about his method of training. Using Kyubi's chakra to perform katan ninjutsu was brilliant and Jiryu was suspicious that the demon came up with this idea. Also, Naruto's muscle structure pretty much doubled giving him a bigger and stronger appearance, perhaps even bigger than Kakashi, though that didn't mean Naruto could beat the copycat ninja. Nevertheless, the blonde now possessed a threatening appearance to his enemies. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. Holding his sword horizontally, Naruto managed to defend himself from a sword attack from one of the clones, before using his strong legs and landing a swift kick right at the clone's chest, thus dispelling him instantly. After that, he saw the rest of the five bunchins approaching with their swords, Naruto placed his sword on the grass, and made some hand seals. Fudenarashi no Heishi, when release furious hurricane jutsu instantly, all five clones went flying as the hurricane grew in size. After the technique ended, Naruto kneeled on the ground snarling. Damn it, it's still hard to do this technique. In time, you'll learn it said Kyubi to which Naruto nodded, and got up watching the view around him. Normally, he would look at large buildings, wide green areas, and people surrounding the streets. Now, all he saw was an open area, and a big lake to his left. He sat down for a while and watched the river as a few wild animals appeared to drink some water from the river. The animals, though, looked at him and Naruto laughed while wondering if they were bothered about him staying there. It was actually quite peaceful to just hang out for a while. Sometimes, taking a break from things helped clear the mind. Taking off his clothes, but not the mask Naruto jumped to the lake and just relaxed for a while. It wouldn't do any good for him to overstrain his body all the time. Equals 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 with Jiryu equals equals equals. Entering what seemed to be a damaged cottage, Jiryu studied the place for a while. He knew for a fact that his contacts would never meet him in a common place. He didn't have to wait though, as a familiar voice, at least to him, greeted the pervert. It's nice to see you Jiryu-san. You look the same as you did 10 years ago said the man, though, only the shadow was visible. Jiryu knew better that this man wouldn't show more than this, so he shrugged it off and greeted the man back. This man rarely even contacted the pervert, and when he received the letter, Jiryu was surprised to say the least. So, what do you call me for? You rarely meddle with shinobi business, let alone want to talk to someone about it said Jiryu to which the shadow smiled, and began to explain. You're quite right Jiryu, shinobis were the ones who killed my family, so dislike them to say the least. The reason I called you, though, was concerning that one who holds the kyubi inside of him said the shadow, earning a serious look from Jiryu. Naruto, as of a few months ago, became a secret subject, and any info regarding him had to remain a secret. Although, Jiryu was surprised since neither of his contacts ever mentioned Naruto's name, let alone told him something about the blonde that they knew. The shadow wasn't waiting for an authorization from Jiryu to start speaking so he spoke. As you know, the group called Akatsuki is hunting the tailed beasts, but their purpose is still unknown until now said the shadow, just waiting for the information to sink in Jiryu's mind, and he wide his eyes in surprise at this important info. So far Akatsuki's goals were hidden from everyone. Collecting the tailed beasts would grant a lot of power, but the purpose for this power was unknown. Well, I guess you'll tell me or should I read the scroll's contents asked Jiryu as the man nodded and left, leaving the scroll on top of a table. As Jiryu unrolled it, he began reading the document. So far the document contained all data regarding Akatsuki and their recent movements the demons they already captured their members and abilities. Duryu was reading the scroll with a frown, since he already knew most of the scroll, and the info he didn't know wasn't even close to what the man was talking about. However, when Duryu looked at the last paragraph, he flinched. By capturing the tailed beasts, Akatsuki would have the power to level the hidden villages. By using the power of the Bajos, Akatsuki will have the power to create war and then offer their services to end the war, 
thus weakening the power and economic resources of the five hidden villages. Also, is that Kyubi is the key. Even if they manage to capture eight of the nine Bajuas, only by capturing the Kyubi as well will they have access to the power of the tailed beasts. After reading it, Jiryu was paled. First of all, he learned that Akatsuti's goal is to take over the world by creating wars and gaining profit from them. The news about the Kyubi being the key, although surprised him, wasn't unexpected. Kyubi is the strongest of them all. But what concerned him was if Akatsuki decides to go all out against Naruto once they captured the eight others. Naruto is already protected by my counterintelligence, so I just have to watch out for the ones they didn't capture and hope to protect him or her as well from Akatsuki's hands. Looking at the sun, Jiri smiled since it was time for this plan to initiate. Jumping towards the nearest set of trees, Jiri rushed to the place where he would meet his praise and hope that his plan worked. The place was highly surrounded by tall trees, so the enemy wouldn't be able to suspect anything. After arriving Jiri summoned what appeared to be two small toads wearing a small cape to surround their tiny bodies, thus leaving the head out. Is it time already Jiri chan Asked the male toad to which Jiri nodded. Yes, it is Fugasaku-sama. The two are approaching this are in less than five minutes. Let's proceed with the plan said Jiriya to which the little toad nodded and began making hand seals for another summoning ritual. A little far from the place and completely oblivious to a trap all ahead, Kakuzu and Haydn were walking calmly towards their destination. According to their informant in Konoha, Naruto would be located a few miles from where they were right now, so they came in order to capture the nine-tailed fox inside of him. Haydn was complaining like usual and Kakuzu was mumbling threatening words to his so-called immortal partner. It was no secret that Kakuzu already tried to kill Haydn, only for said man to explain time and time again that he can't die. It was unnerving to say the least for the big guy who happened to use this type of intimidation and finding someone he can't kill no matter how much he tried. Oh Kakuzu, how long will it take to reach the place? I can't take why you bother walking when we could reach there faster complained Haydn, earning once again, mumbles from Kakuzu, who in turn responded with his grave and deep voice. We need to be approached with cautious Haydn, the toad San Jiria maybe with the Jinchuriki explained Haydn before seeing Haydn snarled and looked around. Kakuzu, however, was suspicious of perhaps walking into a trap. The man happened to kill more person than mostly anyone and he wouldn't survive this long if his senses didn't improve with experience. Once the two entered in a clearing, the ground suddenly turned to mud, but they jumped away in time. After the swamp vanished, Jiria entered calmly and faced his foes. Oh, is nice seeing you Haydn Kakuzu. I presume you're here for the Jinchuriki? Asked Jiria, not bothering to call Naruto by his name. Just when Haydn and Kakuzu moved to flee, both of them faced two giant toads Gambunta and Gimikin. You aren't going nowhere from here. It's time that both of your existence in this world ends said Jiryu before charging to attack Kakuzu, since Jiryu knew that man was the strongest of the two. Jiryu knew of their abilities. Haydn prayed for Dark Lord Jashing and granted immortality in return, also he has a jutsu that could inflict pain on others by causing on himself. Kakuzu has five hearts, and in order to kill him, Jiryu had to kill the man five times. Other than that though, the information about him being able to use all forms of elemental manipulation. As to Haydn, the only way to kill him was to take off his head. Seeing the imminent attack, Kakuzu and Haydn scattered, and fell into fighting positions. Your blood will be ultimate offer to Lord Jashin said Haydn before he took his side and charged against Jiryu who in turn smiled and only waited until a tongue suddenly enveloped Haydn and immobilized him. Yama Bunta hold him still for a moment. I'll deal with the other one and then I'll take him shouted Jiryu gaining a nod from the toad. Kakuzu snarled at his incompetent partner and removed his Akatsuki cloak. It wouldn't do any good to fight only with one element after all. Jiryu was waiting for the man to be ready, but he wasn't expecting to see suddenly, five enemies to deal with. He would have to be better informed in the future. I knew you have five hearts, Kakuzu, but I never expected you to be able to split those hearts in these beings said Jiryu to which Kakuzu laughed and said that Jiryu's heart would be a fine addiction to his collection, not to mention that the man's bounty was superior to a cage. You won't beat me Jiryu of the Sanin. 
you are a Sanin, but I beat you in terms of experience said Kakuzu, earning a look in wonder from Jiria. Hearing someone having more experience than a Sanin was strange to say the least. Jiria wasn't thrilled to say he was in his 50s, but Kakuzu, although had a strange appearance, wasn't older than him by any terms. Upon asking about his age though, Jiria was shocked to say the least. According to Kakuzu, he was the one who beat Shadaim Hokage. Jiria didn't think that was possible. The Shadai died more than 100 years ago, how you can be alive thus far? Asked Jiria to which Kakuzu laughed, but didn't respond with words, but with hand seals. Rayton John lightning release, false darkness Jutsi said Kakuzu, as one of the masks opened his mouth and exhaled the thunderbolt obliging Jiria to jump and make hand seals for Dotan Yomi Numa earth release swamp of the underworld Jutsi, and slam his hand on the ground. The vast area swamp was suddenly created and Kakuzu jumped out of the way along with three of the masks. However, the one that used the lightning attack was trapped and Jiria threw a simple kunai at the mask thus shattering it. He didn't know if hitting the mask would do the trick. But once he saw Kakuzu holding his chest in pain, Jiryu knew how to destroy the hearts. Meanwhile Haydn was battling Gamabunta's tongue to get loose, but to no avail. After trying for a bit, he snarled at the damn toad and cursed the toad's existence. All he could do in the end was to watch the fight and hope that Kakuzu manages to beat Jiria. Back to the fight, Kakuzu stopped feeling the pain and made some hand seals. Immediately, two of the masks joined and opened their mouths at the same time, causing Jiria to panic. He felt both Katan and Futen level chakra coming out of them and prepared for the worse. Mixing them both was devastating to say the least, and he didn't know anything that could stop the dam attack. So, he used a Dotan technique and went underground, while the joint technique leveled and burned the entire field. After the smoke dissipated, Kakuzu looked around, but no signs of Jiryu whatsoever. It was when he heard someone screaming Dotan Shinjo Zanchu no Jutsu Earth release, double suicide decapitation Jutsu that Kakuzu realized his mistake. Jiryu by this time used another kunai and slashed both fire and wind masks taking two of Kakuzu's hearts, burning yet another grasp at the chest in pain from Kakuzu, who in turn landed on the ground, doubling in pain from losing two hearts almost the same time. Jiria though didn't wait for him to get over the pain and charged him in straight Taijutsu for a while. Kakuzu saw Jiria approaching and dodged the incoming punch as well as the succeeding roundhouse kick. By this time, he ignored the pain and engaged Jiria in Taijutsu. The fight was matched pretty nicely, where Jiria punched Kakuzu on the shoulder, Kakuzu used the momentum and flipped his body thus gaining speed in his kick straight at Jiria's chest, thus sending him flying, before making hand seals, and his second mask sprang to life. Sutan Suariudin no Jutsu water release, water dragon Jutsu. Seeing the incoming dragon approaching Jiria while in midair, made some hand seals for Dotan Doryaki earth release, mud barrier Jutsu and exhaled a thin layer of mud on the ground just as he was about to land, while seizing the approach of the dragon, and waiting for the wall to rise and protect him from the damage, which occurred just milliseconds away for the dragon to hit, thus sending water all over the field. His Taijutsu is even better than mine, impressive. Ninjutsu is excellent, but what about Genjutsu? Let's find out. Behind the wall, Jiria initiated some hand seals and molded his chakra in ways of reaching Kakuzu's chakra system. When he found it, his hand finished on the ram seal and Kakuzu now found himself inside a room that happens to expel what appeared to be an acid substance towards him thus burning him alive. At first, Kakuzu screamed in agony, since his senses were being cheated into believing that the acid was burning all his skin. However, Kakuzu noticed something strange, since he was firstly battling Jiria in a plain field and now he was inside a room burning alive. Snarling at his lack of ability in detecting Genjutsu, Kakuzu stopped the flow of chakra and dispelled the Genjutsu before clutching his chest yet again. Looking for Jiria, he found the man slicing yet another mask while he was busy dispelling the Genjutsu. Kakuzu was pissed, to say the least. One man, no matter how strong he was, couldn't destroy four of Kakuzu's hearts alone. Kakuzu remembered the Akatsuti's leader ordering them not to engage Jiria, and now he knew why since Jiria was a formidable opponent. He looked at Haydn who in turn, stopped struggling against the toad's tongue and stood there watching the fight, not able to do anything. Four of the hearts are now destroyed, leaving me only your real one to deal with. Now. 
From what I saw of your counterparts, each mask represented a ninjutsu element. So, seeing that I eliminated Raytan, Fudan, Sutan, and Katan, I believe there is only your Dotan ability to deal with said Dario as he extended his hands and focused on rotation. Kakuzu was prepared to dodge any ninjutsu Dario would use, but when he saw the legendary racing gan forming on the man's hand, Kakuzu became worried. He remembered hearing about the Yan Dimes technique, but he never got to see one, nor its effects. Once finished to charge, Dario charged against Kakuzu with speeds that were hard to follow. Kakuzu was desperate now and immediately, used his hair inside him and switched to long-distance fighting, thus hindering Jiria's advance. However, instead of frowning Jiria was smiling, which once again set Kakuzu on edge. Suddenly, he felt what appeared like a power drill against his back, practically ripping his body apart. Upon looking, he was astonished to see Jiria there pushing the racing gan forward, thus damaging his body even more. After the hit, Kakuzu was sent flying together with the blast and both collided with a big rock. The racing gan was doing its job though destroying Kakuzu's body. When Jiryu arrived to see, he spotted the body and saw that he was dead. Quickly taking a scroll, Jiryu placed what was left of Hidden's body inside it and turned to see Hayden who was by now snarling in fear after seeing someone killing Kakuzu. Don't worry about him, my friend, your punishment will be even worse. He cannot longer feel anything since he's dead. You on the other hand, will be left to rot inside the stomach of a certain toad. Game Ubuntu, will you be so kind to release him said Jiria while doing hand seals and slammed both his hands on the ground, saying Gamakushi Shibarai no Jutsu toad mouth binding Jutsu. Suddenly the scenery changed and it switched to inside the toad's stomach just like the first time Jiria did this Jutsu against Itachi and Kaizam. Haydn looked around afraid until Tendril suddenly grabbed him and took him inside to be devoured by the toad's stomach. Jiryu was already outside looking up, wondering about the benefits of Naruto's counterintelligence mission. He was enjoying this thing way too much and wondered if by doing this, he could beat Orochimaru. One thing was sure though, Akatsuki now lost two more of his goons, thus they will have a harder time gathering the tailed beasts. Taking the scroll of Kakuzu's remains, Jiryu jumped on top of Gamabunta's head and asked for a trip back to Konoha to which the toad snarled, and began to jump towards fire country. When he left though, a giant plant emerged from the battlefield and looked the fleeing toad, before vanishing once again to tell Pine of the troubling news. Back to Jiryu, he was conversing with Gamabunto about Naruto, and how he was faring these days. Gamabunto expressed his displeasure of not being summoned often by either Jiryu or Naruto, only for the toad Sanin to laugh while joking that when he called the boss toad, he was always grumbling about not wanting to be summoned to this plane of existence. Watch your mouth Jiryu, I was just asking about the brat. I heard that he became a hunter nin after a jowning of Konoha died, isn't that right? Asked Gamabunta to which Jiryu nodded and explained everything beginning from Naruto taking the blame for Saratobi Asuma's passing and choosing to leave the village so that Akatsuki don't bother the village after me, nor give them the chance to use someone he cared about against him. The toad was impressed with the boy, but Jiryu continued talking. I think the reason he doesn't summon you, is because by doing so, people would recognize who was behind the mask and his identity would be revealed. In time though, he will lose the mask and fight alongside us once again, Bunta said Jiria. Equals 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 and Konoha equals equals equals. Inside the mission archives, two people were looking intently and reading about all of a certain blonde's missions, since he was a genin until now. D, C and B ranked missions were recorded for everyone from Jounin up to look at so that they could gauge what was happening to the Jenins and Chunins of the village. Kirena and Kakashi read tons of papers in hopes of finding some trace of information about who tipped Akatsuki about Naruto's whereabouts. Kirena was already fuming since she couldn't find anything but Kakashi on the contrary, was focused on one particular mission, the Wave Arc. Some details of the mission escaped his knowledge at the time like Naruto saving Inari, and his mother from two goons that were supposed to kidnap them for leverage. However, what interested him though, wasn't that. Missions that suffers a change in rank are usually the one that all ninjas want to read it. Hence what Kakashi's interest was focused on. He knew Dan Zhao was smart, and wouldn't put his name as the one who read the archive. But Kakashi didn't need to see his name. 
Several of the names scribbled at the file were common names like himself, Isuma Gai, and a few Tokubetsu Jounins. However, there was one or two that he didn't know about. Kirena saw Kakashi picking a file, and went towards him to find what he found out. This mission log picked my interest. It was Team 7's first C-ranked mission which in turn, was updated to a ranked, because of the fact that we encountered C and a ranked missing nits. Now, the ones who read are common names, but there are two here that I don't know about. Do you know who they are? Asked Kakashi to which Kirena looked at the two names, only to find one that she knew. I know only one Kakashi. Karema Yakimo, former Andy member and growing profusely at the Genjutsu department. Naruto helped her get over a demon that was assaulting her mind, so she wanted to know a little bit about Naruto, but the other one is strange as well explained Kirena. Kakashi wrote the name in a separate sheet of paper and closed the wave arc mission. He had a hunch of this man's involvement with Dan Zao's knee division and went to the listed shinobi archives, followed by Kirena. Something wasn't right, and he would get to the bottom of this. Kakashi now felt ashamed to see people messing around with his student thus spying Naruto's whereabouts. After entering inside the Konoha Ninja Force Registry, Kakashi began searching for the name that appeared on the Wave Arc mission. Takara Shinobu wasn't found at all and both Kakashi and Kirena ran into the list two times. Something is wrong in this. This mission was restricted to Jounin and above it can't be possible for this man to see it and not be listed as a Konoha Shinobi explained Kakashi earning a nod from Kirena. Maybe, th the name is false, so this can't be linked to Danzao. That would be a plausible solution for investigating on Naruto's archives without having to worry about anyone finding out said Kirena, before seeing Kakashi nodding in negative. No, he wouldn't be able to do something like that without alerting unwanted attention. My guess is this man is one of his goons from Ni, telling everything for Danzao. The hard thing, Though, is that we met a dead end. Until we can find this man and get the information of him, there is no way we link this to Dan Zhao unless. Said Kakashi as he thought for a while. It was risky, but after his time with Naruto, Sai changed and got away from the operations. I happen to know someone who could point out who is this Shinobu and hopefully, we can link this to Dan Zhao in no time. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. After getting out of the water Naruto got dressed and jumped towards the next set of trees. Mizuki was last seen near a village between the border between fire and river country, so he would arrive there and summon Gamakichi to track the man. Naruto was finding it strange how light he was feeling at the moment. It was like all the weight on his body was non-existent, the sword awaits. Instantly, Naruto jumped from a tree to the other in nothing more than a blur. The speed was new to him and sometimes, Naruto would miss the tree from passing the place where he needed to land his feet. Immediately, Naruto focused Chakra to his feet, and began dancing around the huge set of trees, while trying to get accustomed to his new speed. The way he moved was similar to Lee with his weights on. It seems all the training really paid off. You are now adjusted to the weights on your body to the point that they are no longer usable. Release them, and you'll see your real speed said Kyubi to which Naruto nodded and released before charging towards the incoming trees, faster than ever. Man this feels nice. I wonder if Lee feels the same thing when speeding like this. The wind on my face is amazing, thought Naruto, as he kept jumping through the trees like blurs. Don't get used to this, though Naruto. Upon reaching the proper store, we are going to purchase heavier weights. The way for the muscles to be more adjusted, and ripped is for it to not get accustomed. We need to increase the pace, constantly, until you can reach the designated size. Find a clearing, and we'll train your new agility so we can use it effectively in battle instructed Kyubi to which Naruto nodded, and continued to jump through trees until he landed in the designated clearing. As he fought against the cage bunchants, Naruto was smiling. He has become stronger training together with Kyubi and sometimes, he wondered why he didn't become stronger before. Of course, he knew the answer to that question, but now that he saw the results of this training, he wished he changed a lot sooner. Don't get too cocky brat, you still have ways to improve, but yes you are stronger and faster. Now you realize that you should have done these years ago, 
instead of playing the role of the fool, the dead last. Now, I'm going to teach you a new katan ninjutsu. It's time that I taught you my demon techniques, since after all we are one. So, the technique is called katan make a note fire release hell fire jutsu. This jutsu takes a lot out of you just like the furious hurricane, but in time, your chakra will grow, and you'll be able to do it. Now, this fire is different. It's hotter than the elemental fire, however fail in comparison to that Uka's Amatarasu. Unfortunately, the god of the sun technique is stronger. These are the hand signs, just mold the necessary chakra, and slam both your hands on the ground. The fire will erupt from the ground explained Kyubi, earning a nod from Naruto who summoned Kyubi's chakra, and molded the seals, before slamming his hands on the ground. Suddenly white flames erupted from the ground, like a volcano, and burned a tree in seconds. Naruto, then, dispelled the technique because it would burn everything in its path. Being satisfied with the jutsu and his new speed, Naruto once again rushed towards his designated assignment, after all it wouldn't be nice to keep Mizuki waiting. According to the bingo book, very few hunters ever tried their luck against the man, only to be defeated and of course dead. Whatever skills Mizuki acquired, not only cured him, but also granted him more powers. As Naruto crossed Fire Country straight to border town between River Country, his eyes saw a couple of leaf shinobis camping not far from him. By the looks of it, was a couple of chunins and a jounin, but none of them were familiar to Naruto, so he kept on going. Two hours later, he arrived at the border town and quickly got inside a nice hotel right in the beginning of the little city. Once inside his room, he summoned Gamakichi and asked him to use his nature chakra in order to sense someone with high chakra. Gamakichi didn't need much time and found only one man that filled the description. Naruto, the guy I sensed is a little bit far, but I believe he is within the limits of this town, however I can't pinpoint his precise location, sorry said Gamakichi, but Naruto waved him off, telling him not to worry and appreciated the help. Said Toad greeted him goodbye and Naruto got out of the hotel in hopes of finding Mizuki and settling this thing once and for all. The city did have its charms. As Naruto was walking around trying to find Mizuki, the blonde couldn't help but look around and administer the beauty that was only increased when the sun began its descent. Suddenly, the target appeared leaving what seemed a grocery store and began walking away. Naruto decided to follow the man through the many roofs in hopes of reaching a clearance. However, what Naruto didn't know was that Mizuki already sensed him and was only waiting for him to strike before killing yet another leaf nin. After the clearing arrived, Mizuki awaited the strike who in turn, never arrived. When he turned, he saw a hunter nin walking towards him with hands on pocket, and found it strange that he didn't try to kill him when he got the chance. Immediately, Mizuki was on high alert. He heard rumor of a powerful hunter Nin and worried that this guy might be him. His musings were cut short when he heard the hunter Nin speak. Tuji Mizuki for your crimes against Konoha, you are hereby sentenced to death said Naruto to which Mizuki snarled and fell into a defensive position. This guy's presence was strong, but Mizuki wouldn't go down easily. Don't underestimate hunter Nin, a few of your kind tried before and failed. What makes you think, your fate will be different? Snarled Mizuki before silence enveloped the battlefield. For a few seconds, no one said anything, but instead, they turned look at one another. Naruto, then took off his sword, and began to talk. Because I've already beat you several times before and now will be the last said Naruto, before summoning Chakra to his feet and charging Mizuki like a blur with his sword. Mizuki saw the hunter one time, and then the man vanished, in thin air. Suddenly, a huge gash on the side of his stomach was formed and blood poured out of it obliging Mizuki to place his hands on the wound and snarl at his opponent's speed. Tell me something Mizuki how did you manage to survive the effects of Orochimaru's drug? The last time I saw you, you were begging for breath and your whole body shrieked. What happened? Asked the hunter Nin earning a look in surprise from Mizuki who in turn, wondered who this hunter Nin was. Who are you Gautamit? How did you know about Orochimarusama's potion? Asked Mizuki before hearing a laugh from Naruto, who in turn responded. Well my identity is not your concern Mizuki however I fail to believe that the bingo book was accurate you don't seem all that powerful to be granted an A rank status said Naruto, 
burning a snarl from Mizuki who by now was clenching his teeth in anger before making hand seals. Let's see you be able to dodge this hunter nin. A lot of your friends died from it. Rayton Rakurai lightning release, thunderbolt jutsu said Mizuki as a huge thunderbolt charged against Naruto who just stood there, molding his chakra towards his wind barrier. After the thunderbolt hit, Mizuki was surprised to see a wind barrier around the hunter nin, thus protecting him from the attack. Suddenly, he heard Naruto screaming Futen day top a wind release, great breakthrough jutsu, and an immense gust of wind sent him flying, before using the momentum to flip his body and fall on his feet. When he got up though, he saw Naruto's sword be ignited with flame, before the hunter nin vanished. Suddenly, an immense pain reached Mizuki's neck, and in an instant, he was dead once and for all. This imbecile didn't give us a lot of a fight. I was hoping he could give us more wind kyubi inside Naruto's mind to which Naruto nodded and did all the steps necessary to send the man's head back to Konoha as proof of the kill and burned Mizuki's body. It wasn't long until Gamakichi returned with the money. Equals 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 and Konoha equals equals equals. After checking with Sai, both Kirena and Kakashi found that Shinobu was Sei's sensei and Right now, they were discussing their findings with Zenate about initiate a full investigation on Shinobi and Danzao. Suddenly, someone entered from the window and alerted all those present. Wow, easy it's me, I thought you'd be glad to see me said Jiryu, earning a popping vein from Zenate and a following punch while screaming use the door next time pervert. Kakashi and Kirena sweat dropped at their interaction. When Jiryu approached once again, he told the news about how he used Naruto's counterintelligence program and managed to take out Haydn and Kakuzu, burning wide eyes from everyone present. Kakashi told the Sanin about their conviction of Danzao's right-hand shinobu to which Jiryu nodded, and began to think about it for a second. I tried asking questions to Haydn, but he didn't know anything. I bet only their leader knows who is telling them information. Dan Zhao is smart, and won't show anything out of the blue. Even if you put Anbu to watch him 24 hours, he simply won't do anything until you drop the investigation. The best course of action would be to follow this shinobu, and see what we can find about it minus offer Jiryu, earning nods from those present. Okay, then, since I'm no longer needed here, I'll be going. I still have to tell the news of Akatsuki to the blonde. Does anyone wish me to tell something to him? Asked Jiria. Kakashi asked if he could go with him to see Naruto since he kind of missed the hyperactive blonde a little bit. Jiria said that Naruto changed and that Kakashi wouldn't be able to recognize him, but Kakashi shrugged it off and still wanted to go. Kirena was still pregnant, so she couldn't travel, but she gave a message to the blonde as did Sinate. It wasn't long until both Kakashi and Jiria hopped on top of Game Abunta, and they went to river country in hopes of reaching Naruto tomorrow. After a while, Kirena left the building towards the hospital for some checkup when she saw Hannah leaving the veterinary section, apparently sad about something. After greeting her and asking what's wrong, Hannah stated that she didn't hear about Naruto, and that she wanted to talk with him for a while. Hannah expressed a dormant feeling inside of her for the blonde, and seriously wished to converse with him. Kirena smiled at the girl and told her that unfortunately Naruto wouldn't arrive for some time. Although Hannah wasn't surprised to hear this since Naruto was a hunter nin a part of her wished that he abandoned the job and returned to Konoha so that they could go out or something like that. Kirena felt sad for the girl when an idea appeared. Hannah the Hokage has a secure network communication with Naruto, maybe you could send him a letter or something, you know to meet him somewhere offered Kirena earning a look in wonder from Hannah, who in turn asked why the Hokage would bother doing this for her. Tanate sama considers Naruto to be family, of course she would do that especially seeing that you have feelings for him said Kirena, earning a blush in response from the Inuzuka vet. Well, I guess I can talk to her about it, then. I'll write a letter to him and give it to Tanate sama tomorrow morning, thanks Kirena-chan said Hannah before leaving with her triplets towards the Inuzuka compound. Equals 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 and Sinead's office equals equals equals. Sinead was finishing the paperwork that was accumulated because of Naruto's mission when a sudden knock on the door was heard. When the person entered though, Sinead was surprised to say the least. Inuzuka soon was friends with her before she and Shizum left the village, but after she returned to be Godame Hokage, 
Not once did the woman come to her office. Hello, Sanate Sama, how is the paperwork treating you? Asked Soon with a smile that earned a vain pop from Sanate. The answer to that question is always a negative one, what can I do for you soon? Asked the Hokage, a little suspicious of Hana opening her mouth to her mother. The Inuzuka woman, though waved her suspicious away by simply wanting to talk about a hunter nin to whom her daughter was infatuated with. Tsunade remembered Hana talking about Naruto and smiled. It seems Tsunade sama that Hana has been talking a lot about this new hunter nin's fame and even one day. I caught her having what appeared to be a good dream about him. She told me that you would have information about him, and I admit to say that I'm curious about this guy. Until now, no man did this to my Hana said Soon to which Tsunade smiled at the mother who was thinking of Naruto as a son-in-law. Soon, before I tell you about him, you must swear secrecy about his identity simply because very powerful people could use this information against him do you agree? Asked Tsunade, earning looks of wonder from the woman, but nodded anyway. Equals 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 with Jiri equals equals equals. The next day Jiriya and Kakashi were eating some dango for breakfast in an inn not so far away from Fire Country's border with River Country. He sent a messenger toad to go fetch Naruto and tell him where to meet him and now was only waiting for the brat to arrive. Kakashi for his part was reading Jiriya's notes on the next book of his and unsurprisingly so, he was attached instantly. Along the trip, Juryu told him about Naruto's adventures so far and how far had he got since he left the village. Kakashi had to say he was suffering in anticipation to see how much his student grew. Suddenly, a figure appeared on the horizon, and both of them could see the hunter Nin mask. Naruto received the message from Juryu and wondered why the man would want to speak with him about. He sent a note back, telling he would arrive the next morning. As Naruto arrived, he eyed Jiryu, but he saw another familiar person reading what seemed to be notes of some kind. When the silver hair was visible, Naruto knew right away it was his old sensei Kakashi. The two elder shinobi got up and waited for Naruto to arrive. Kakashi looked at the hunter Nin and wondered if this man was actually the one he called Naruto. Naruto was now the same size as him in terms of body mass and Kakashi could see that Naruto has indeed changed. Upon arrival, even before anyone could greet him Naruto initiated. So, what is that you wish to speak to me about Jiriya-san? Asked Naruto. Kakashi flinched at not being greeted by his old student, but vowed to not bother him. Suddenly, Naruto asked to eat inside where he could be more comfortable to which both elders nodded. Once inside Naruto took off his mask and showed his face. Instantly, both Jiriya and Kakashi swore he saw Minato looking at them. Hello Kakashi Sensei. Sorry I didn't talk to you before, it's just that while using the mask I couldn't risk someone eavesdropping said Naruto to which Kakashi smiled and nodded secretly relieved to see that after all the changes Naruto was still Naruto. Jiriya for his part was looking at Naruto and wondering why he didn't have the same hospitality as Kakashi to which Naruto responded saying that while using the mask he couldn't do anything that could jeopardize his identity. So, the group began talking about what happened and the next course of actions in the future. Chapter 9 Suna Request A lone figure was walking around within the outskirts of a small village located within Fire Country's territory. Tall maybe 5'9 and quite muscular. The man stopped for a while in order to scan his surroundings. Being someone of his position, he just couldn't let himself to just rest and stop worrying about people hunting after him. After a while, the man continued to walk towards whatever destination he was headed to however that was the last thing the man did in his life as a blur appeared, and slashed the man's neck with a sword thus killing him instantly. Seconds after the body fell on the floor, the blur suddenly stopped and stood next to his victim. The killer's clothes were black from head to toe, except for white mask that was peculiar to Hunter Nins. A couple of weeks passed since his encounter with Jiriya and Kakashi and safe to say Naruto was hard pressed not to respect the Sanin for being able to take out two members of the Akatsuki at the same time even if he had help from Gamabunta. As to the kill, it took a while for Naruto to find this guy as he knew that the B-ranked missing Nins would be hard to track. Naruto also learned about Akatsuki's objective behind gathering the power of the Bajois, 
and he had to say it was simply a waste of time to do so much for something that was bound to happen for eternity. Battles would continue happening, as the shinobi world exists. No matter if some ninjas fight evil eventually there would be a war, and in the end innocent blood would be spilled. Naruto wasn't strange to the idea that the more light that illuminates the planet, bigger the shadow that lurks within. It's kind of strange to hear you think like this Naruto. I think you believed in peace for everyone from the way you acted before wondered Kyubi while Naruto was doing the hunter nin routine and sealed the man's head inside a scroll and sent it to Konoha in order to receive his bounty. It would be even stranger if I said that I believed in peace for everyone and kept doing what I do. It would be plainly hypocritical on my part to go against my enemies because of the ones they murdered while I'm actually doing the same thing. Said Naruto, burning a nod from the fox inside of him. Human beings are worse than demons, simply because they are unpredictable. They are ruled by emotions and can change from a nice person to a cold-blooded murder. Explained Kyubi, burning a nod from Naruto, who was already taking his bingo book and scratching the name of the man he just killed. Suddenly Gamakichi arrived and handled two scrolls to Naruto. One containing the money for the capture, and the other one appeared to be a message. He kept the scroll with the money inside his kunai holster and opened the scroll with the message. Surprisingly enough, the message was from Kiba's sister Hannah saying that she wanted to meet with him in order to discuss some issues. I could imagine what she'd want with you Naruto. Laughed Kyubi like a schoolgirl earning a sigh in dismay from the blonde who, until now, was relieved that the damn fox wasn't being a bloody pervert. There you go again, Aero Kitsune. Already assuming she wanted to have sex with me out of nowhere, said Naruto, burning a wonder whisper from Kyubi who then explained that none of the women he slept with were any different to which Naruto told the fox to just stop talking for a while. Turning once again to read the message, Hannah wanted to meet him inside a village not very far away from his position and that she would arrive there tomorrow night if he accepted to meet here that is. He didn't have an objection against the meeting, and he could use the time to rest a little bit inside a hotel. Quickly writing his consent, he gave the scroll reply to the toad, before seeing him vanish. However, he couldn't help but wonder what the woman could want to talk to him about. Naruto wondered if perhaps, he spoke too much, and now his identity was revealed to Hannah and cursed himself from this. Equals 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 inside Sinead's office equals equals equals. Sinead and Hannah were talking about Naruto's status as a hunter nin, and how far was he in terms of the bingo book when Gamakichi arrived with Naruto's reply. Opening the scroll, Sinead smiled and said to the girl that Naruto accepted the request, but the blonde insisted that the mask remained because of fear that someone might see his face thus ruining the entire operation. Hannah san, he accepted to meet with you at the designated place but use caution upon approaching him in a public place. Try not to address him by his name, and everything will be fine. I'm giving you a fake recon mission close to that area, so that you can talk to him. Pack your stuff and good luck explained Sinead, earning a nod from Hannah before she left the office. After Hannah left, Sinead was left alone for a while to think of the recent activity so far. So far, Kakashi and Sai are following the man known as Shinobu from Ni for quite a while, but they discovered nothing worth of use. It turns out Dan Zhao trains his man to be experts in what they do. However, Sinead seriously believed to be on the right track because of Kakashi's findings. Duryu was also using counterintelligence to change Naruto's fake locations from time to time, but the white-haired Sanin expressed his concerns over Akatsuki simply cancelling their connection with the rat and go after Naruto on their own. Sinead of course was worried, but she knew that being a hunter nin must have taught Naruto some advanced evasion procedures in case of being outmatched. Last, but not least, the rookie nine were becoming impatient to know about the damn blonde, and often chose to question about when Naruto would return from his mission with Jiria. She heard from Kirena and Shikamaru that the Chunins were becoming rather annoying, and even Ino was demanding to know what really happened to Naruto. Nonetheless, Right now it wasn't the best time to come clean with them. He was getting stronger that's for sure, however he still wasn't Akatsuki level. According to Kakashi's report on his growth, Naruto put up some muscles and exhaled battle experience, however until he moved on to the ranked missing nins, 
Naruto's counterintelligence mission will proceed as planned. It was late at night so Tsune took the opportunity of some alone time and grabbed her all-time favorite bottle of sake, before pouring some and then looking at the village she was sworn to protect. Somehow, she knew that something was missing, none one to call her back and no one to enter inside her office screaming instead of talking. Without Naruto, her life was rather boring to say the least. It has been quite a lot of time ever since he chose to follow the lone career of the hunter Nin and, actually, she was jealous of Hannah for being able to leave the village to see him while she was stuck inside her office, trying to clean the ever-growing paperwork. The blonde Sanin couldn't help but begin to remember her life after she met Naruto and in seconds, tears fell freely from her face. Tsunade considered the circumstances of the hunter's life and how much he had to give before he could collect what was rightfully his. Naruto was treated like shit all his life, and not once the blonde complained about it. He had that goofy smile on his face that was impossible to ignore, and quite easy to grow attached to. However, after what happened to Asuma Tsunade didn't know if realization fell upon Naruto, or what happened for him to just change his behavior so much. His reasons for leaving, though, were unfounded, well, at least to Tsunade. The idea of Akatsuki using someone against him was of course a dangerous thing to happen, but Konoha wasn't the strongest hidden village for nothing and she could clearly think of several Konoha nins that could go up against the Red Cloud organization. Tsunade didn't know whether or not they were all the same as Idachi's level, but if Turiyu was able to take on two, then they weren't invincible. After pouring more sake, Tsunade was ashamed to believe that she was being selfish in this whole ordeal. She actually believed that Naruto didn't need to leave and if Akatsuki came, Konoha would deal with them. Nevertheless, she failed to comprehend about the damage it would be if S-ranked missing nins arrived in Konoha and used their techniques to destroy the village. While Konoha produces fine shinobi, Akatsuki wouldn't be bound to fighting fairly, therefore if they came there was high possibility that Konoha suffers a lot of casualties before being able to take on Akatsuki. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. After sending the message reply, Naruto got up from his position and left the village before someone saw him. Burning the enemy's corpse served two reasons in Naruto's mind. One was the official one since by doing this, Konoha prevents other villages to capture the body and learn its secrets, if any. Naruto's second reason for doing this was to erase any signs of his actions since the only thing left are the dead's ashes, and that was already swept by the wind. Now, he was heading towards his destination to meet with Hana however since he still had some time he took his time and just traveled at a slow pace, although no one would consider it to be slow. For a week now, Naruto purchased heavier weight as per Kyubi's demands and now his muscles were getting acquainted with the new set. Also, by getting better adjusted to the weights Naruto would eventually use more chakra hence how he was slowly increasing his chakra capacity. Nevertheless since leaving Jiria and Kakashi, the only thing Naruto trained in was getting used to the weights and some physical training with his sword, which by the way was now heavier as well. The thing is that the blonde found a local blacksmith shop and requested to fix the sword steel a bit, but now using a different type of steel that would add weight to the sword. Of course, no shinobi in his sane mind would hinder his movements in such a way and Naruto wouldn't either, the thing was that when Kyobi wanted to be a pain in the ass, there was no one that could match him in battle. Especially if the damn fox was leaving inside of him, therefore getting exclusive rights of broadcasting pain in the ass Kyobi. Stop complaining you damn brat, you are to train so that you can take on against those damn imbeciles wearing the black cloaks. Your agility is growing a lot, so don't worry about changing the weights too much. This set will be on you for quite a while, before we have to change explained Kyubi, earning a grumbling in annoyance from Naruto who muttered fucking slave driver fox, silently hoping that the Kyubi would hear and he did. But instead of complaining like he did, the fox laughed at his expense thus earning a vain pop in Naruto's head. I swear someday I'll come inside that damn cage and shove my new racing gan up your ass snarled Naruto but Kyubi couldn't stop laughing at his expense. I'd like to see you try Blondie. After that, the two just stopped talking for a while and Naruto traveled in silence. Kyubi could be so annoying, and he always managed to get into Naruto's nerves. Nevertheless the companionship was worthy in the end. Naruto wouldn't know how to continue this if it hadn't been for his bickering together with the fox. 
He never believed the monster to be like this, and his image of the Kyubi was changing. Could you go any faster brat? You're taking too long. Or maybe not. Quit bickering down there, bastard fox. I have all the time in the world to reach that damn hotel. Equals 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 and Konoha equals equals equals. After Hannah left Sinead's office, she went straight to her house. The news that Naruto agreed to see her was great and improved her mood a lot. However, a new thought ran inside her head and now she was overwhelmed by doubt and insecurity. As a proud member of a proud clan, Hannah couldn't afford to be insecure therefore it was safe to say she never felt that way. Her doubt was whether or not Naruto would return her feelings for him. She did well to remember that in their mission, there wasn't much conversation going on and Naruto was the one that talked, and she was screaming at him for not taking the enemy seriously. As a hunter nin, one couldn't help but learn to depend on no one simply because in the end, you only have yourself for company. What good you do her to talk to him only for him to tell her that he didn't feel the same way as her. For some reason, this thought was unbarring to the Inazuka, she had dreams about him, she often wondered about how he was doing Naruto was everything she could think of right now, and if he blew her away, she wouldn't know what to do. She needed to talk to someone, and she needed it fast. Running with all her might back to his house, she hoped that her mother was there. Soon was one of those person that you could talk anything with and Hannah, oftentimes took advice from her. On the way she considered controlling her thoughts so as to not suffer in anticipation, however for all her might, she couldn't the thought of Naruto dumping her was unbearable, and now her hair was aching. Hannah's triplets were concerned with the girl. As she ran, they followed close by and were able to feel her emotions. It wasn't long until Hannah emerged from the compound garden and rushed inside in search for her mother. Upon entering the living room, she saw Tsum petting with her companion before asking Hannah where the fire was. Kaya-san, can I please talk to you, it's urgent? Asked Hannah, while feeding the triplets. Tsum nodded at the same moment, and somehow knew what was this all about. Tsum remembered her conversation with Sinead about the hunter Nin to whom her daughter was infatuated with, and she was shocked to hear the man's identity. Tsum never knew much about Naruto, except for the fact that he housed the Kyubi no Yoko inside of him and was friends with her son. Of course, she knew of some of his achievements in time, but she admitted not having much interest in knowing about him. Well, until he appeared in her little Hannah's life. Ever since she returned from that mission all that Hannah ever talks about was about the blonde and his progress as a hunter nin. Now, Hannah was breathing hard and desperate to talk to her about something. Needless to say Tsum had a slight clue of what Hannah wants to talk about. What is it dear? How can I help you? Asked Tsum, waiting for her daughter to explain. I communicated with Naruto and he agreed to meet me in a village near here however instead of being happy, I'm now in doubt as to whether or not he would feel the same way explained Hannah, earning a smile from Tsum before she got up from her seat and grabbed her daughter's hand, before looking straight to her eyes. Hannah-chan, it's clear that you're infatuated with this man however both you and I know that he just saw you once. You can't expect a guy like him to just fall for you after one night. You need to take your time a little bit since you'll see him, approach him with care. Get to know him a little better and allow him to get to know you as well, you know that if you just arrive there and pretty much say the L word there is a serious possibility that he won't return it right away and you'll be devastated said soon, slowly allowing Hannah to slow her heartbeats and smile to her mother. Being a hunter Nin taught him to rely only for himself, it would surely take a while to break that barrier, but I understand mother. I will go slow and get to know about him. What do you think of him mother? I mean, I never got to see about your opinions towards any of the guys I went out with, but regarding him, I really want to know what you think about him asked Hannah, cornering her mother a little bit. Soon never expected such a question from her daughter. Turning to think about it for a while, Soon smiled and responded. I don't have any bad things to say about him. He befriended Kiba-kun and already got to help him in controlling Akamaru when he was blinded by anger. He was the one that fought against the Keiskage when Suna and Sound invaded that time. He possesses a strong spirit Hana-chan, and after hearing about the reasons of his departure, 
my respect for him rose even more. Also Tsunade Sama thinks rather highly of him as a person like I said I don't have any bad things to say about him even aware of who lives inside of him. Stated Soom, earning a nod and a smile from Hannah who in turn appreciated what her mother did and went up to her room to pack her stuff for her fake mission. After all, it would be quite a long trip. Equals 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 with Sinead equals equals equals. Finishing her bottle of sake, Sinead got up from her office and looked at the time. It was rather late, and now she would be able to go home. All of the shinobis were either on missions or inside the village sleeping. So whether or not she stayed, it wouldn't really make a difference. However, just as she was about to open the door, she felt the presence of someone sneaking inside and got ready to beat the guy, only to hear. Sinead Haim, it's been a while, haven't it? Asked Ryu while seeing the woman turn and show her not so thrilled face to see him. What the hell are you doing her Jiria? I was about to leave and get some sleep snarled Sinead, before Jiria nodded and offered to accompany her to her house. Sinead thought about it and shrugged her shoulders, thinking nothing of it. On the way Jiria was explaining about the mission and how Naruto was doing. The boy is quite skilled in the art of killing, I'll give him that. The technique that Kyubi taught him is really something else. I'd ask him to teach me the katan and download Suruji fire release, flame sword jutsi, but since I don't have one, it would be useless explain Jiria. I'm not too thrilled to hear that he is out there killing people Jiryu, even if they are criminals. I didn't want this for him and certainly not Sarutobi sensei. He would, clearly, become a chunin if he stayed for the chunin exams that happened in Kumo but instead, he became a hunter nin and is being trained to kill and to kill only explained Sinead afraid for the blonde's mentality. Duryu though, tried to imagine Naruto as a bloody killer, but couldn't. It wasn't the blonde's mentality at all. I'd have a little more faith in him if I were you. Naruto is nothing compared to a murderer and his kills are all consequences of battling his opponent. Besides, ninjas are trained to kill and protect. He's doing both by dealing with Kanaha's enemies. Eventually, he'll be strong enough to go after the strong ones, and will be there to help him. The last time I saw him, he was dealing with the ranked missing nins, and they were all low down in level shinobi. He is a tough one to crack stated Jiryu with utmost pride. Well, only time will tell. I know how shinobi change after becoming a hunter nin. Oh just so you know, Naruto is meeting in Uzuka Hana tomorrow inside a village nearby here. Said Sinead, earning a look in wonder from Jiryu who heard that the girl was rather infatuated with Naruto, and wanted to talk to him. Jiryu expressed his concerns over the girl, and reminded Sinead of the reason Naruto left in the first place. Sinead, Naruto became a hunter nin so that Akatsuki wouldn't be able to use anyone against him. If this girl Hannah gets too close to him, I fear the worst reported Jiryu, but the thought was dismissed by Tsunade. He knows that. The message reply he sent insisted that he remained with the mask, otherwise people could see his identity. Hand understands this as well explained Tsunade, earning a nod from Jiryu before he vanished in thin air, surprising Tsunade a lot. However, when she heard Sakura screaming her name, she understood it right away. If someone saw Jiria inside the village, people would demand answers regarding Naruto. Man am I glad that he did this for me. Sinead Sama going home? Asked Sakura, while she accompanied the blonde. Yes, it's getting late and the documents are pretty much taken care of. There is no reason for me to stay any longer. Tell me though, why are you doing up this hour? Asked Sinead, earning a sheepish look from Sakura who in turn told her master that she was doing some research at the library for something she encountered one of the patients at the hospital. It wasn't long until Tsunade reached her home and she bade Sakura farewell for the night. Equals 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 the next day equals equals equals. Just as Tsunade reached her office, she encountered a letter on her desk. As she read it, she learned that it was a request from the case kitchen to capture a missing nin that is causing Sunas hunters quite a bit of trouble. It seemed that Gara was asking for a specific hunter nin from Konoha to do the job. Well, I guess Naruto took his time to talk to the Keisuke after all. It wouldn't be a surprise if Naruto helped them capture someone else. Those two do have a bond together. 
I'll send a message to Naruto to go to Suna and aid them. Thought Tsunade as she activated a seal below her desk and instantly Gamakichi appeared, greeting the blonde Hokage. Gamakichi, would you be so kind and deliver this little mission to him? I'll be writing a message to him so just wait up a moment said Tsunade, earning a nod from the toad, before he jumped towards the window. Konoha was a great place to live it certainly looked peaceful down there. When Tsunade handed him the scroll, she stood next to him and looked at the village as well. This village is rather quiet without him around. I'm counting the days for him to return to us and get into that door, screaming his usual obscenities and making a scene of himself stated Tsunade, earning a look in wonder from the toad. The toad wondered about the blonde Hokage and about what she thinks of Naruto, however she was still due to know the real one and he wondered what would be her reaction once she see him back, and yet not see him at all anymore. I understand that it will take a while for him to come back. After all, the bingo book is quite thick, even if he already narrowed down to maybe 20 or 30 foes. Don't worry, though, I'll be sure to hand him the mission scroll said Gamakichi. I appreciate what you're doing Gamakichi thank you. Please hand it to him asked the Hokage, earning a salute from the toad, before he vanished, leaving Sinead alone once more to think. I know that you are not the same anymore Naruto-kun, but I really wish to hear at least one more time you calling me back and even if you're just doing it a favor to me. I want to see your face again. In seconds, Gamakichi vanished and reached Naruto's location. Someone would find it odd how a summon could show up exactly where the summoner is without he or she calls for the summon. However, before Naruto left, Daria designed the communication seal allowing not only Sane to summon Gamakichi specifically, but the toads can also locate Naruto's position. The blonde was already at the hotel that he was supposed to meet with Hana, and upon receiving the letter from Sane, he opened it, and turned to Ri. Naruto-kun, it's been a while since I last saw you and I miss you a lot. Some people say that you only give value to stuff once you lose it, and they were right. I didn't imagine it would be so hard to live here without seeing you walking around the village and pulling a prank or two. Nevertheless, I know you have your reasons to do what you did, but I want you to know that I miss you a lot. I guess I never got to say this out loud to you, but I consider you a part of my family along with Shizun, you're like a little brother that while can be annoying, you can't help but love him. Anyway, I just wanted to say that, and also to say that I'll eagerly wait for you to return home, and if you dare dying on me, I'll resuscitate you from the dead, only to give you the worst beating of your life, you hear me? Well, enough of that. Within this message is a little mission that I'm entrusting it to you. I know you have a mission to capture Kanaha's missing nins, but this was personally requested by the Keisketch. It seems they are having trouble dealing with an ex jounin of their village and requested Kanaha's best hunter Nin to aid them in capturing this foe. After your meeting with Hana, go straight to Suna and talk to the Keisketch, he'll explain everything. You'll receive the equivalent of an A-ranked mission for this one and don't worry about this going into your records. This part I got covered, since your real documents are locked inside my personal vault. Good luck. After Naruto finished reading, his heart couldn't help but feel warmed. True enough, Sinead and Shizun, like the Sandime and Uruka were considered his family. Also it pained him greatly to hear Sinead being sad for him, but he knew that he did the right thing and Akatsuki hasn't bothered Konoha since. His plan worked, and already two of their members were taken care of. Now as to the mission, he would gladly help Gara any time he needed, so he didn't even bother to say he accepted the mission on the message reply but instead focused on telling his big sister how much he came to love her as family as well, and hoped that he could return home in no time. Naruto even wrote the name he called Zanaid with the sole intention of cheering her up. Such sentimentality. You're an interesting person Naruto whispered Kyubi to which Naruto replied by saying that no matter what changed in his life, he'd always remember those that not only didn't treat him badly, but also made enough efforts to become a part of his life. Naruto explained to the fox that such bond isn't caused by blood, but instead by spirit, earning a nod from Kyubi who agreed with the blonde, as to the concept of family and how, even though the lack of blood bond, all four of them considered Naruto family. In minutes, Naruto wrote the message reply and gave to Gamakichi before seeing the toad vanishing. 
Looking at the sun position, Naruto realized that Hana must be approaching the place real soon, and that he was supposed to put his mask on at least to greet her outside the hotel room. As soon as he walked out of the hotel, he managed to see at the horizon Hana's dogs and just stood there waiting for the girl to approach him in order to say hello. Suddenly just as the dogs were about a couple meters away from him, one of the triplets literally jumped and knocked Naruto on the ground, before started licking Naruto's mask thus showing affection for the blonde. Hana, for his part, wasn't as surprised as she should have been after seeing one of her dogs abandoning the owner's side and display such level of affection towards someone. The truth is that said dog was pretty much demanding the little group to speed things up and reach the place faster. Hannah wondered if the dog knew that she was coming to meet the blonde. Looking at the blonde one second time, though, managed to race her heart a little bit. She remembered her mother telling to take her time and get to know him better, but now that they met once again, she wasn't unsure of what to say to him. Naruto, however, helped her a little even if he was playing with the dog on top of him and in the same time holding his mask so not to fall down. So, Hannah-san, what do I owe the pleasure of this meeting? Oh, and how are the pups we retrieved a while back asked Naruto as he got up, but continued to caress the dog's ears. Hannah for his part silently thanked the blonde for bringing up a subject and answered that Kuromaru's pups are doing fine and were just a few months away from completing the family training before being placed under one of the clan's jounets. Using the time Naruto granted her, Hana was able to address the blonde. Anar. Hunter-san, is there a place in private where we can talk for a while, it's important to me said Hana, inside punching herself from making such mistake and looking at the mask, while waiting for him to answer. Naruto for his part snorted at the girl discovering his identity, and wondered if he was to blame for this when he said of Akamaru or perhaps the Hokage told her. I think both of you are to blame, you earned her suspicion, and the Hokage must have confirmed it. Explained Kyubi, earning a mind nod from Naruto. Sure Hana-san, if it's my mask you wish off, the only place I trust is inside my room said Naruto, before hearing Kyubi laugh inside his head from insinuating that he was inviting the woman to his room. Hana for her part wondered about the blonde's intentions, but accepted and followed Naruto as he walked inside the hotel. I was wondering why you choose this place for us to meet Hana-san. I was expecting maybe somewhere a little less public. Giving my position, it wouldn't be advisable to meet on such a public place asked Naruto, earning a nod from Hana who in turn, explained that she knew all about the hunter nin status and explained that the hotel location isn't well known. After a while, the shinobis and the dogs reached the room before Naruto opened it with his key and allowed Hana to enter along with the pups. The room was quite cozy, and the open window allowed some rays of sunshine enter and illuminate it. Before Hana could say anything Naruto was already fixing her dogs some water. Hana-san I don't mean to sound like a pervert here, but in order for me to remove my mask, the drapes would have to be closed said Naruto, earning a smile and a nod from Hana before she closed the drapes and then turned to the blonde who was placing his hands on his mask in order to remove it. For some reason, life suddenly stopped for Hannah, and her heart was beating like crazy. Hannah sure has feelings for Naruto, but she fell for his personality since she didn't get to see his looks. She heard one time, some of her old classmates saying that Naruto has a rather similar looks to the Yondime as a child and wondered, silently prayed that Naruto would be as handsome as the late Hokage. When Naruto removed the mask Hannah's eyes widened any sound that she was hearing stopped, her sense of smell ceased to exist. She was having difficult to breathe. It wasn't only because of the fact that Naruto was the Yandime reincarnated along with sexy and feral whisker marks. Falling for someone only based on the person's personality, and now falling for the looks as well was tough on everyone and Hannah was no exception. Naruto was wondering what got into her for staring at him so much. But the reason wasn't that he was clueless, but rather the fact that Naruto never had someone drooling upon looking at him, and he admitted to say he was feeling a little awkward with the whole situation. Add that to the fact that I can sense pheromones being released, and you can get the idea of what she wanted with you laughed Kyubi, and wondered how the blonde would resolve the matter. Naruto was indeed an interesting person and Kyubi was beginning to thank the man who locked him inside the blonde, 
and thus giving him the opportunity of entertainment 24 7 Naruto wouldn't do anything drastic, but needed to wake her up, or else she might be doing something drastic. When he asked for her name, Hannah instantly woke up from her slumber, and blushed instantly from being caught starring. She couldn't help it though, and immediately apologized to the blonde. I'm so sorry Naruto, I didn't mean to. Said Hannah before Naruto waved his hand dismissing the necessity for apologies. No need to apologize Hannah-san, so what did you wish to talk to me about? Asked Naruto before Hannah blushed some more, but took the courage to explain that she wanted to get to know him better. Naruto was confused of course. He did think that Hannah was beautiful and really attractive, but he never thought that she would like to know about him of all people. Naruto was a little bit modest when it came to talking about his qualities, mostly because all he heard was people saying bad things about him and almost no one did the opposite. He accepted to talk about it, though, seeing that the woman came all the way up here from Konoha just to do that. So then Hannah, there isn't much to know about me. I entered the academy at age 6, graduating at 12 with Kiba. I said Naruto, but was stopped by Hannah who in turn smiled. Naruto, I happen to know about you shinobi accomplishments both from Kiba and Kirena-chan, it's just that. Okay, I guess some explanation are in order here. For some time now, I've been thinking about you and how much affection you display toward one of my dogs and safe to say, I didn't get to meet a guy that my dogs didn't bark or growl. Instead they sense you as being someone pure and us and use Yuka's happen to place a lot of faith in them. They act as our guides in life. We trust those that are trusted by our dogs explained Hannah, earning a nod from Naruto, followed by a smile that caused the same insecurity in Hannah once again. I see it must be an honor to be someone trusted by them and also a little strange, since people don't seem to warm up to me for reasons that I rather not divulge at the moment stated Naruto, earning a look in wonder from Hannah before realization dwelled on her. I only wished people would see past their hate and see you for who you are and yes Naruto, I know of your prisoner. The fact that the dogs doesn't sense any evil intent coming from you, show us in Yuzuka's that you have a pure and caring soul. I wonder though, how it was for you to grow up as you did without anything asked Hannah before seeing Naruto looking at her in surprise. The blonde should have known that Hannah knew about his tenant, since she was older and was perhaps alive when the fox attacked the village. How I managed to grow up, you want to know. Well, I guess I haven't given much thought about it, but I guess I can answer that for you. Ever since I was little, the only thing I received from people was hate and grief glares from the village's citizens. At the time I wasn't aware of my condition, and tried to figure out what was it that I did to deserve it. I was young back then and couldn't figure out, so I let it go and just survived, while ignoring the hateful glares initiated Naruto, as Hannah focused on hearing each sentence from the blonde as he told his life to her. Some time before I entered the academy, the Sandime Hokage decided to increase my allowance and gave me the apartment that I now live in Konoha. Oftentimes he would come to visit, and he even introduced me to the ramen stand where I used to eat a lot. My time at the academy was initially good, but it took me a while longer than the other kids to learn the subject, thus being on the center of laughs from the class including your brother by the way. I managed to graduate on my third attempt and got placed at Team 7 under Hitake Kakashi's guidance. The rest you already know so I won't bother to repeat said Naruto, though leaving the worst part of his childhood to himself. He didn't tell her that, sometimes instead of glares, people would use him as a body bag, especially on his birthday and how his growth was hindered at the academy because of the teachers. Hannah knew that Naruto wouldn't talk about the tough parts of his life as she also knew when a person was omitting information. Nevertheless, what he told was enough and did get more questions for her to ask. You'd be mad at me from saying that your life must have been tough, wouldn't you? Asked Hannah, earning a slow nod from Naruto. As I grew up my knowledge about hardships in life became subjective, even though no one had to deal with things they didn't cause. I know for a fact that people have their own nightmare to think about so it wouldn't do well for me to show everyone how it was for me growing up. Take Kirena san for instance, she lost her husband and now her baby will be born without a father to look out for him explained Naruto. Hannah couldn't help but agree with the blonde. 
Indeed, Kirena will have a hard time raising her child, but she smiled upon knowing more about Naruto's strong personality and how he overcame his life hardships and now was growing to become a fine shinobi. Hana couldn't help but wonder if it was really Naruto who was saying all these insightful words. You are a good man Naruto acknowledged Hana, but was surprised to see the blonde nodding in negative. You can't say that for someone whose profits are earned through killing people explained Naruto, but this time it was Hana who was nodding her head. While it's true that hunter nins are meant only to kill that alone doesn't show the ninja's personality, or whether he is good, or evil and there is where my companions appear. If you were evil like you say you are then my dogs would be cautions in your presence and most certainly, they would attack you on the spot stated Hana before one of the dogs licked Naruto's face before barking at him, which in dog terms, meant caress my ears. The two remained talking for a while about Hana's life and how it is to have Kiba as a brother. Naruto confessed about his rather awkward winning against Kiba during the Chunin exam preliminaries and Hana couldn't help but laugh at Naruto's expense. The two were having a nice time talking and didn't realize that the sun was now replaced by the moon. Naruto suggested calling for some dinner to which Hana gladly accepted, since she knew Naruto would have to put his mask if they were to eat at the hotel restaurant. Eventually, the food arrived and Hana had to apologize for the waiter because one of her dogs jumped on the food and sent the waiter to the ground. So, Naruto, tell me about your Hunter Nin career so far. How far on the bingo book, you are now? Asked Hana as she set the dinner on the floor and placed some dog food for her companions. Naruto for his turn nodded and began. Well, I'm already at the B rank section, though the opponents now are rather dangerous to say the least. There was one man who managed to hit me with a lightning attack. Needless to say I almost passed out from the pain. If it wasn't for the Kyubi, I'd surely pass out. This guy happened to be the first of the B section. The next ones though were much easier as I resorted to more subtle approaches than simply challenging them for a fight said Naruto, earning a nod from experience from Hana who suffered a lightning attack as well and explained that she had to rest at least a week at the hospital. Hana even showed Naruto the scar on her left shoulder to prove her point to which Naruto showed his as well, but whereas her was the shoulder Naruto's was located near his chest, and when he exposed the scar for Hana, the girl couldn't help but blush upon seeing some flesh. A couple hours later, it was already time to sleep and Naruto offered his bed to Hana to sleep while he settled for sleeping on the ground next to the dogs. At first, Hana objected since she wouldn't like to be a bother and offered herself to sleep next to the dogs instead. But after a little persuasion from Naruto, she accepted the bed. Right now, she was inside the room's bathroom getting changed to sleep, though her mind was racing on her conversation with Naruto. Truth be told, she adored her time with the blonde and by now, getting to know him better Hana was certain of her feelings for him. She thanked the heavens that she was able to control her pheromones, but now it was time to see his resolve in all this. Hana admitted that her meeting with him was great, but she knew if she returned to Konoha, it wouldn't take long for her to fell the utmost necessity to talk to him once more. If his resolve was as big as hers, Hana would at least prefer to settle for something deeper for the two of them, so that when he came back home, he would return to her. It was now time for a little bit of teasing. In the living room Naruto was petting the dogs while thinking of the woman getting dressed inside the bathroom. Hana was sure gorgeous and attractive, but what interested Naruto the most was that she was rather nice to talk to and whatever decision he made, she would simply respect it and move along. He knew, now from Kyubi that she was interested in him and as the conversation flowed Naruto's interest for her intensified. It's been a while since you've been with a girl, wouldn't be nice to feel once again asked Kyubi to which Naruto nodded, but with Hana wouldn't be just a one night stand. She wouldn't cross fire country just for sex. Naruto, though, couldn't shake off Hana's sexy figure out of his mind. It was even worse when Naruto saw Hana leaving the bathroom with nothing except an oversized white shirt and went innocently, straight to the bed even though she caught his eyes staring at her. In seconds, she was already lied down and making sexy noises while feeling the sheet's fabric. Are you comfortable Hana san Asked Naruto from the living room, earning a nod in acceptance from Hana who in turn smirked. Operation teasing begun, let's see how much you hold up before you join me. Very comfortable, 
This bed is amazing. It's a shame though, that you don't get to feel it whispered Hannah, surprising Naruto with the boldness, and even the one inside the blonde who by now was releasing his own pheromones to match the girl and assist Naruto. Hannah felt the pheromones, but was able to control herself. It wouldn't do well for an Inuzuka to lose at this game. Naruto for his part smiled and turned to watch as Hannah contortioned her body a lot in ways to feel the bed entirely and relay a clear message of her intentions to the blonde. Wait a minute, she's teasing me, isn't she? Well, it's her loss, thought Naruto as he heard Kyubi agreeing with him. The girl was in serious trouble now. Well, it really would be a shame if I didn't get to feel it, wouldn't it? Perhaps, the bed is big enough for both of us said Naruto, before Kyubi did his part of the attack by releasing quite the amount of pheromones. While this was her idea, she could feel the intensity of Naruto's pheromones, and could imagine who would be behind all of this. His question was inclined to be quite bold to say and the increase in pheromones served to incite her urges and don't treat Naruto's reply as an act of perversion. At this moment, Hannah knew she was dealing with a professional and she already knew that the outcome of this match would be a win-win situation for her. If Naruto come and sleep with her will be worth the travel, and if Naruto submits to her teasing will also be worth her travel. You are free to come and feel it if you so wish, Naruto teased Hannah, but at this point any contrary act would be inconsequential as Naruto was already moving straight to the bed. It didn't take long for Naruto to sit next to the girl and place his hand on Hannah's cheek and caress it gently near the Inuzuka birthmark, earning a moan in satisfaction from the girl. Hannah was surprised that Naruto managed to reach the Inuzuka's soft spot and smiled at him. She wanted him so much that she often had dreams of this exact situation. Naruto smiled and bent over to position his face right in front of Hannah as he smiled, before gently initiating a deep kiss on her lips. Needless to say Hannah was in heaven. She wrapped her arms behind his neck and pushed him closer to her and Naruto simply complied. As they were kissing, Naruto used his hands to caress Hannah's neck gently while his tongue asked for permission to enter. After a while of kissing, Hannah's hands moved to take Naruto's jacket off, making Naruto stop the kiss and look at her hands in wonder before smiling and looking back at her face. You don't want this, Naruto? Asked Hannah, only for Naruto to snort at her. Only someone crazy wouldn't want this said Naruto as he then whispered close to her ears. Hannah-chan. Needless to say Hannah was astonished to hear the suffix added to her name and smiled before taking off Naruto's jacket while Naruto was gently licking her neck, thus pleasuring her in ways that the Inuzuka never thought possible. Naruto didn't do much to her and her body was already shaking in anticipation for what will sure to become legendary. After throwing his jacket on the ground, Hannah proceeded to slowly pass her hands throughout Naruto's arms, thus feeling every one of his ripped muscles, as well as some battle scars which turned her on even more. Eventually, Naruto's hands were now massaging her body and Hannah was both surprised and excited at his unexpected movements. Hannah always thought Naruto to be a more controlled person, not at all driven by emotions. However this type of situation wasn't like other ones, so she waved it off and just let him massage her body, however Naruto wasn't disrespecting her by going below the shirt. But he did pleasure her the same way. Hannah found Naruto's hands to be incredibly soft, despite knowing about a few of Naruto's kills. As he rubbed her chest, Hannah couldn't help but want more and by now, she was losing control over her actions. Hannah took off her shirt and surprised Naruto, since the girl wasn't wearing anything else. Naruto was sure he was worshipping the body of a goddess as he used his hand to caress Hannah's bare skin, while approaching her mouth once again and kiss it this time with more intensity, more aggression. Instantly, Hannah's animalistic instincts kicked in and suddenly she was possessed. She began to beg him for doing things to her. As an Inuzuka female Hannah was kind of submissive and urged for the male to take control of the situation and surprisingly, Naruto did what she wanted. She could sense his animalistic treats such as the whisker marks being elongated, and his teeth were now kin to an animal. Instantly, she ripped off his fishnet wearing underneath the jacket, exposing his ripped chest. Naruto for his part smiled and roared towards her neck sucking it so hard that Hannah felt his teeth almost piercing her flesh. It was exhilarating to say the least and Hannah was loving every part of it.
Eventually, Naruto's mouth went down and began sucking her well-developed breasts, earning a moan in ecstasy from Hana who in turn used her claws and began scratching Naruto's back ferociously. She was digging her claws thus piercing some of Naruto's flesh, but he was too damn turned on to even think about pain. It wasn't long until Naruto reached downstairs and Hana's eyes lost their color. Naruto's tongue was doing a number inside her inner walls, thus making her moan his name louder than usual. The pheromones being released by the two of them were unbelievable, but none of them seemed to care as Hana decided to reattribute the favor and ripped Naruto's black pants as well as his boxers before grabbing it and sucking it for a while. Naruto grabbed her hair and was massaging it as Hana gave him a blowjob. From out of nowhere, Hannah fell an immense feeling of ecstasy and her legs trembled. That happened only because Naruto grabbed through her hair and lifted her head in order for him to kiss her passionately while she used her hand and began massaging Naruto's cock. Hannah was ecstatic about having an orgasm right away and wanted more. She whispered for Naruto what she wanted to which the blonde complied and positioned himself to take her from behind just like she loves to be handled. As Naruto entered inside her with force, Hannah let out a scream of pain, followed by consecutive moaning of his name and begging him to grab her hair and pull it hard. Naruto did just that and for a moment, Hannah's only thought was how wonderful it felt to be fucked from behind by Naruto. A wonderful 15 minutes later, Naruto's crotch was convulsing and he was already inches away from coming right inside of Hannah. Oh my god! Hana I'm coming shouted Naruto before taking his dick off and ejaculate far away from getting the girl pregnant after one time having sex. After the whole thing, both Naruto and Hana returned to their former characteristics and both went to sleep on top of each other. Hana, however, couldn't sleep. She was so happy that her dream came true. Naruto wasn't only a nice guy, but also a strong shinobi and an awesome lover. He was perfect, she thought. Naruto for his part was also wondering what possessed him to lose control over his urges like that and looked at Hannah only to see a smile on her face. Admit it, you've fallen for this girl. I don't blame you. The moment she scratched your back like that, it was the wildest thing I've ever seen. Anko and Kira were both nice, but Hannah was nothing of this world. I've never seen you use my powers for this type of situation and for her to be able to entice you that much that only mean that she is one hell of a woman said Kyobi and Naruto agreed with every word the fox said towards Hana. Equals 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 the next day equals equals equals. After checking out of the room Naruto and Hana were leaving the hotel side by side. Hana with her dogs in tow and Naruto already dressed as a hunter nin. Naruto said that he received a mission from Sanate Sama to head towards Wind Country and Hana told that she was supposed to head back to Konoha since her fake mission was to end today, so she would return in order to not arouse suspicions. However, when it came the time for both of them to head their separate ways, some force stopped them. Both Naruto and Hana didn't want to split apart just yet, but also they knew they had to. Naruto was supposed to arrive tomorrow at Suna and Hana was supposed to return to Konoha by tonight. Naruto-kun, I know for a fact that I don't want to leave you once again, yesterday was one of the best days of my life and I wanted to pass more time with you however we both have obligations as ninjas from the village. Said Hana, earning a nod from Naruto. Yesterday was surely fantastic Hana-chan. I wished I didn't have to leave just yet, but the Keisuke is expecting me. I want to give you something said Naruto as he reached for his pack and pulled out an exclusive seal before giving to Hana. What is this? Asked Hana. This is a seal devised by Jiryu to communicate with me wherever I'm located. By pouring some chakra into that seal someone from the Toad Summon Clan will arrive for you to send me a message and that same seal will serve for me to send you one explained Naruto, earning a smile before Hana hugged Naruto. I never thought that this could be so perfect Naruto-kun, and I'll be expecting to hear from you soon. I'll place this as soon as reach my house. Train hard Naruto-kun, I want to be there waiting for you when you come back home. Meanwhile, I'll be writing to you and you'll be writing to me in return said Hana, earning a nod from Naruto. Travel with care Hana-chan and I promise to write to you said Naruto, before Hana began making hand seals out of nowhere. Naruto asked her what she did, and she smiled answering that she made a genjutsu for them to become invincible. 
I want to kiss you one more time Naruto-kun set Hana before taking off the blonde's mask and start kissing him madly. After they broke the kiss, Naruto smiled and promised a schedule for more of their dates to which Hana gladly accepted, and turned to walk away from him with a smile on her face. I'll see you soon Hana-chan you can count on that shouted Naruto already with his mask on before seeing Hana stop and turn to him before nodding and saying that she will be waiting for his letter. Needless to say their future would be a bright one. Naruto, after Hana disappeared from view, took out his map and looked at which direction wind country was. If he speed things up, he can reach there tonight. Having already planned his route, Naruto returned the map to its place and vanished towards his destination. Equals 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 Suna at night equals equals equals. The Keisuke Gara was finishing reading some documents when he heard a knock on the door. After allowing whoever it was to enter the room, a chunin that Gara knew was assigned for gate duty appeared. Keisuke Sama, the hunter nin from Konoha just arrived said the chunin, earning a nod from Gara before asking to send him in and call for Temurai to come to his office immediately. The Chunin complied and let Naruto in the office before closing the door, thus leaving the two alone to talk. Keisuke sama I'm here on behalf of Sanate sama the Hokage, how can I assist you? Asked Naruto, before kneeling on the ground thus confusing Gara as to whether or not Naruto was making fun of him by going through these unusual formalities. I have to say it's weird enough to hear you call anyone sama but go as far as to be respectful it doesn't suit you at all Naruto stated Gara, before seeing Naruto get up and laugh at his friend. I just wanted to see your face that's all. It was indeed quite priceless to see the great Keisuke showing signs of confusion. What can I do for you Gara? Asked Naruto before Gara answered saying that he will tell once Temurai arrived at the office. While waiting Gara asked about the wind gathering technique and how far Naruto reached with this technique. Naruto for his part smiled and made some hand seals before extending his hand and began gathering wind before he formed an energy ball made of wind thus impressing the Keisuke. I did believe you'd be able to reach this level of control, but please dispel the ball, I don't wait for someone around here see you doing a Suna technique asked Gara, earning a nod from the blonde, before dissipating the technique. Five minutes later, the door opened up and Temurai entered the office asking Gara what was needed of her. Temurai, the hunter nin from Konoha just arrived, please do explain our current situation for us ordered Gara to which Temurai complied, but wondered why the guy is already here seeing that he was only due to arrive tomorrow, however she waved it off since Gara wasn't on high alert. Okay, so the name of our guy is Mishimoto Kamazuki and as of now he is declared an A-ranked missing nin. So far the man managed to cripple all of our hunters and yet no one knows how to defeat this guy explained Temurai wanting to hear the man's voice about the subject. Naruto for his turn nodded at Temurai and turned to Gara to ask about the man's abilities. Kamazuki is a master at using the wind element with one of Sunna's top battle fans. Just a swing of it, he was able to send five of our hunter nins flying. Not to mention that Fudin doesn't only enable creating hurricanes, but also enables the ability to slice objects and flesh, so it's important for you to be careful hunter San. Since this mission is official Sana's business, Temurai here will be escorting you and helping you find the man who by the way won't make enough effort to run, since he's quite adamant to find someone to fight against. One and one last thing, this man needs to be taken alive, so killing him is prohibited said Gara, earning a nod from Naruto who in turn agreed to leave first thing tomorrow morning and left to look for a hotel in town. After he left, Temurai turned to Gara and wondered why her brother was smiling. Are you sure this hunter can handle him? Asked Temurai to which Gara nodded and explained that this hunter Nin was special and decided to let his sister uncover the riddle for herself. Temurai shrugged it off and left the office, thus leaving Gara alone once more. The case kid returned for his documents, while satisfied that Naruto would get the job done. Chapter 10 The Stronger Wind once inside a hotel which happened to be located quite near the Keisuke's office building Naruto took off his jacket and his mask after closing the drapes so as not to be seen. He didn't have anything to do other than maybe rest and take a shower, so he chose the latter. Every Suna hotel explained to their guests about the shortage of water supply and asked for them to not take long showers. Naruto wasn't one to disrespect, 
so he just took a five-minute bath and changed his clothes to a more comfy, since he would be sleeping soon. Suddenly, though Gamakichi arrived and with him was a scroll. Naruto, seriously, I know I agreed to do this for you, but I can't be your damn postman all day. Why did you give the seal to that girl? Asked the toad, earning a small apology from Naruto who in turn, explained the reason behind allowing Hannah to summon a messenger toad. Well, from what you told me, I guess I can accept that. However, you'll have to do something for me in return, asked Gamakichi to which Naruto nodded, since he knew the only thing his toad companion wanted and that was chocolate bars. From each letter you exchange between us, I'll buy you two chocolate bars, how is that sound? Asked Naruto, before seeing the red toad switching to thinking position for a while. While the toad was considering this, Naruto was thinking of how much greedy can the toad be, if four chocolates per letter weren't good enough. I accept, since this is the first one, we'll begin our agreement at the second one she sends to you. Well, go on read it, I'll be waiting for your reply said Gamakichi before seeing the blonde nod and open the scroll. Hello there Naru-kun. I just wanted to tell you that I managed to place the seal accordingly and now we've settled our level of communication. Well, I wanted you to know how nice it was to finally be with you, and I couldn't be happier. Plus teasing my little brother by telling I was seeing a hunter nin and seeing his face of anger, really did a number on my stomach. I laughed for hours. Also, I told my mother about our day of course not all of it, and she was happy for me. She wanted to meet you, though she knows it won't be possible seeing as you're a hunter nin, but she's very supportive of everything. How about you? Where you are now? I'll wait for your reply. Hannah. Naruto laughed a little bit at the image of Kiba acting like the protective little brother and snarling in anger once he heard about Hannah dating Naruto. Picking up a blank scroll, he wrote back to Hannah about his position and that he was hunting a new missing nin that was last tracked near Suna. He also displayed his share of laughter at picturing an enraged Kiba hoping also to read further teasing acts at Kiba. As to Hannah's mother Naruto wrote explaining that he never met Tsum, but he heard great things about her abilities both as Kunoichi and as a mother from raising both his friend, and the one he was dating right now. He finished the reply asking for a favor for Hannah to supply the messenger with four chocolate bars, explaining that the toad was greedy and wouldn't do it for less. He gave the reply to Gamakichi and appreciated for the help before seeing the toad vanish. After that, Naruto went straight to bed and closed his eyes in seconds, before being transported to Kyubi's mindscape instantly. This happened every time the blonde slept as per Kyubi's request. According to the fox, while the body would get to rest, Naruto's mind would be used as means to improve his training. Kyubi used this method to introduce the concept of fire manipulation to Naruto. Equals 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 inside Naruto's mindscape equals 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 took you long enough to come here Naruto. I actually thought you'd take a while to write that letter to your mate stated Kyubi, followed by a snicker as he knew Naruto would be hard pressed not to say anything after he used the word mate. What the hell are you saying Aero Kitsune, we had only one date it's not like we're going to settle down or anything explained Naruto, though he was surprised that he was questioning his own words right now. At first, the girl was nothing but aid in a mission to capture one of the missing nins, However when she appeared next, wanting to meet him Naruto felt something different. The fox, seeing his jailer in deep thinking could only smile in return. However, the reason of Naruto being here was for the training of the boy's mind. Aside from teaching the blonde to get stronger and more powerful, Kyubi happened to possess a wide-scale knowledge regarding shinobi aspects. Also, as a hunter nin Naruto would be sometimes required to deal with an opponent in a different way than blunt force, and using Jutsus and Kyubi had the perfect topic in mind to teach Naruto. Okay Naruto stop wondering about Hannah, and let's focus on a topic I want you to learn. It's called pressure points stated Kyubi, earning an eager nod from Naruto who took a sit on the ground, and looked up since Kyubi was quite big. A pressure point in the field of martial arts refers to an area on the human body that may produce significant pain or other effects when manipulated in a specific manner. By knowing where to hit other than simply hitting the opponent, you can either cause pain beyond measure, or even immobilize a certain area of the opponent's body. 
you'd do well to remember your fight against that fake hunter Ninhaku a while back, right? Asked Kyubi to which Naruto nodded. So, Haku used needles and placed them at specific parts on your body in order to incapacitate your body movements. Also, remember when he put the Achiha trader on a false death state by placing one needle at a precise point right below the neck. As a hunter nin, you'll be required to have this knowledge as it will be an advantage in the future. Now to learn where the pressure points located are, you'll need to memorize what I'm about to explain to you. Because although no human is the same as the other, the pressure points location remain the same. Explained Kyubi as he began to drill information inside Naruto's head as to the many places to strike and if possible, teach the blonde about the use of needles. Equals 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 the next day equals equals equals. When the sun rose, Naruto immediately felt its warmth and woke up, while holding his head from the immense headache he was feeling right now. Learning pressure points were hard but not impossible to learn, however when Kyubi changed the subject to teach the blonde the art of using needles to hit precise target points, the blonde wished he could have shut both body and mind to keep him away from the huge pile of information that was battling to make space on his mind. Quickly dressing his hunter nin attire and the mask Naruto left the hotel room before suddenly, he was face to face with his company on this mission, Kamurai while holding a basket of breads of different types. I was hoping you wouldn't be late to leave the room Hunter San, I thought I'd get to hold this bucket for hours said Temurai, earning a nod from Naruto. I wonder if Gara put her up to this, or is this some weird way of Suna displaying their hospitality for Konoha? Thought Naruto, as he accepted the bucket of bread and placed his mask sideways in order to eat the bread, and to keep his identity safe to the girl. I would suspect that she did this in ways of getting you on the sack later. He, he laughed Hyubi while inside the blonde's head, earning a sigh in dismay from the blonde, who actually thought that the damn fox was satisfied after his meeting with Hannah. Not now, damn fox. Temurai san, I have to admit, I feel a little bit humble from having the sister of the Keiskich, serving a no one like me some breakfast. I wonder about Keiskich Sama's intentions, asked Naruto, not entirely sure what to make of this type of situation. Surely Gara was on to something with this and Naruto was too much frightened to think his longtime friend might be setting up something between him and Gara's sister. Beats me Gara just asked me to assure you had a nice time in Suna. I didn't know what he is planning with this, but since he is the case kitch, I guess I didn't have a say in the manner. Well, since you had your breakfast hunter San, we should get moving fast. We are at the tempest week of the month, meaning that we'll have to avoid quite a lot of hurricanes before reaching the end of the desert explained Temurai to which Naruto nodded, before wondering why the girl said the part about leaving the desert. Where is he located? I thought he was residing within wind country? Asked Naruto with clear annoyance as he crossed the forsaken desert needlessly. Sensing the man's frown, Temurai assumed he was rather angry from having to cross the desert without any need to it but she explained that a recent recon mission returned with Mishimoto's real location, and he is currently residing within a small village near river country. If we travel faster, we'll take a day and a half to cross the desert and one more day to reach his location. I don't think he would move from that position as I'm sure he spotted our recon team, so he will logically assume we still didn't give up the chase. It will be up to you to face him and render him unconscious. Think you can live up to the task? asked Tamurai. Naruto for his part frowned, but his reaction remained the same. In the end, it will all be decided on who has the stronger wind. I won't intend to give you an answer before I get to face the man in combat. Nevertheless, if Sunna's best couldn't fight him, then I'll be hard-pressed not to believe his wind abilities to one of the best in all of the elemental nations. In the end, the battle will be decided on who got the stronger wind between both of us explained Naruto, before seeing a nod from Temurai who couldn't help but agree with the hunter Nin's words, and be silently impressed. She knew a fair amount of her village's hunter Nin's going as far as to date one in the past. All of them with close exceptions, became arrogant with their abilities, stating that no matter how much dangerous the enemy could be, this hunter Nin, though gave her a realistic answer, while also, telling her that he also, possesses a wind affinity. A while later Naruto and Temurai left the hotel, and went directly towards the city gate. After presenting the documents of the Keiskage's mission, 
thus registering Temeri's exit towards a mission. The case itch created a system that would allow him to know who was inside the village and who was out, also pinpointing how much time it would take for the ones out on missions to return to the village. After clearing everything, Naruto and Temurai stood towards the direction of river country through the desert, and Temurai used her hand to point to a certain direction. When Naruto looked, he was surprised to see three hurricanes side by side as they danced along the desert in the northeast position. We need to feel when the wind shifts its direction. After it, we'll have close to 30 seconds to get as further away as possible from the place, before the hurricane is formed. We'll need a lot of chakra to travel as fast as we intend to as well as dodge the hurricanes explained Temurai to which Naruto nodded, before both of them charged towards river country. Equals 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 and Konoha equals equals equals. One of the deep and dark places of Konoha, where no man in their sane mind would want to be right now was the Ama Torture and Interrogation Department led by Konoha's interrogator Marino Ibiki. There was a reason for this, because the man's methods rivaled no one. Brutal, but efficient, Ibiki could either make the interrogated spill all his life or drop dead from not being able to hold the pressure for long. Countless people came here and all of them ended up spilling their entire lives to the man. However, one man was different. Takara Shinobu was brought in for questioning by orders from the Hokage from suspicion of being a rat for Akatsuki. According to the man's file, Kakashi and a chunin named Sai followed him for a while, before discovering that the man was sending information to a man named Pine, which happened to be the Akatsuki's leader. The problem was linking this man to his leader, Dan Zhao. Below a two-way mirror, three people laid there discussing the next course of action. Kakashi, Zanade, and Ibiki were trying to figure out what they could discover about this man and what information did he pass to the organization. I've encountered tough subjects to crack, Zanade Sama, but none of them is any way similar to this one. It's like Dan Zhao transformed him into a mindless individual said Ibiki after explaining that methods that rely on emotion wouldn't be effective against someone emotionless. Both Kakashi and Sanade nodded at the Tokubetsu interrogator, indeed when Sai first came to their lives, he was similar in every sort of way. Emotionless just with the mission in mind and nothing else, it took Naruto's attitude to change Sai's behavior into turning friends with both him and Sakura. However, if this man truly has no emotions, then Ibiki wouldn't be the best candidate for this interrogation. His method relied on messing the man's mind, pretty much destroying them to get the information Konoha needs. Ibiki, who would you consider for replacing you with this guy? If your reports are true then we would need a different approach asked Sanade, earning a nod from Ibiki who in turn begun to think for a while. On the spot, I would consider my sensei Yamanaka Inoichi, he could get inside the man's mind without the need of torture slash interrogation however I don't know if it would work because the Yamanaka clan justice rely on a cooperative mind and it might be dangerous if sensei were to try against a man trained by Danzo. Dot I will regret to say this, but we are in need of a more physical approach explained Ibiki, earning a look in wonder from both Kakashi and Sanade before Kakashi flinched instantly. Another interrogator in my department has a different kind of approach which relies in the body. While one without emotion, he has tact, and is not immune to pain. The one I'm thinking about uses pain as a method for extracting the information she needs. Her range of options begins with kunais to poisons that could kill a man in second stated Ibiki, earning a sigh in dismay from Kakashi who in turn knew who said woman was. Tsunade for her part looked at the man and issued to call her, pretty much clueless as to the woman's identity. Ibiki nodded and vanished for a couple minutes, before bringing his companion. Sanade sama I brought the interrogator as per your orders said Ibiki before seeing Sanade look at him before her eyes were bigger than saucers. Anko. Equals 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 at Kanaha's hospital equals equals equals. At the hospital Hannah was there visiting Kirena. The woman was already nine months pregnant, and she felt something strange upon entering a market so she rushed to the hospital only to discover it was a false alarm. However, seeing as Kirena could have the baby any day now, she chose to remain at the maternity section of the hospital for the duration of her little Asuma's birth. Linked with Kirena's belly was a tube that would send the signal for the doctors and tell them when the baby would be born. As for Hannah's conversation, she was telling Kirena everything about her date with Naruto, and how wonderful it turned out to be. 
She told about how much he looks like the Yan Dime added with some feral whisker marks, and she told about the conversation they had together. The juicy part of the whole thing was of course, omitted from fear of increasing Kirena's hormones, but she told her the rest of their little vacation. Kirena was indeed happy for both Hana and Naruto, but slightly concerned for her once student Hinata. Even though her confidence risen a bit when the topic of Naruto came, she would be that same academy student once again. However, seeing that neither Naruto saw this occurring nor Hinata reached him to say it, so it was like it never happened. I'm glad that you managed to find someone Hana chan Before Naruto-kun, none of the men you dated turned out to be dating material and I remembered you telling me that one even tried to harm your dog said Kirena, expressing her concerns to Hana and be glad that Naruto treated her nicely. Yes, those were bastards, but not him. Naruto-kun has something with him that you can't help but fall for. You and I agree that his life growing up was horrible and yet, seeing him that day showed me that, instead of taking revenge of the people who wronged him, he understood their pain. In his exact words, he said that his knowledge about hardships in life became subjective, even though no one had to deal with things they didn't cause and that he knew for a fact that people have their own nightmare to think about so it wouldn't do well for him to show everyone how it was for him growing up explained Hannah, at the same time, smiling at her friend from being able to meet the real Naruto. Kirena and Hannah remained talking about Naruto for a while, before the visiting hours were done and she had to go home. Kirena appreciated Hannah for taking her time to visit her. But the Inuzuka Chunin dismissed it by saying it is a pleasure to be of company before issuing her a good night's sleep. Once outside, Hannah headed towards her house to get her well-deserved sleep. She remembered sending that message to Naruto and leaving the house not wanting for the reply. She had to go to her office because of an early emergency. However, as he walked casually towards the Inuzuka compound, she remembered her conversation with her mother right after her date. To say Tsum was surprised it was an understatement, at the time when she saw Hannah bouncing up and down in joy, she wondered about the date, and what happened for her daughter to be so happy. It took Hannah a couple of minutes to explain and Tsum's smile was from ear to ear upon seeing this kind of happiness resurface once again. When Hannah was only a genin, the girl was mostly hyperactive and happy while playing with her dogs. However, one event changed that and Hannah after, changed. It was not a negative change as ninja are required to face stressful situations and learn how to cope with it, but Hannah's attitude towards things in general changed and she was now reserved. After that date with Naruto, Hannah was happier than Tsum could remember and it certainly brought a motherly smile from Tsum. Back to Hannah, she just saw her house on the horizon and immediately began increasing her pace while being followed by her triplet huskies. Equals 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 at the Inuzuka compound equals equals equals. After arriving at the Inuzuka compound, she saw a note at the table from her mother saying that she had to leave for a mission with Kiba for a tracking mission towards Iwa and wouldn't arrive for another three days. Returning the note on the table, Hannah got to feed her triplets before going to her room. Once inside, she saw the seal and was happy to see a scroll next to it. Upon opening it, she began to read Naruto's reply to her letter. Hello there Hana-chan. I'm currently in Suna as a request from the Keisuke, hunting one of their missing nins. Don't ask me the reason for my presence here, I guess Suna's hunters aren't so good or something. Also, thanks for supplying me with material to tease Kibal in the future, I was able to picture his pissed looking face, and I wanted to ask if you could supply me more of these type of situations. As to your mother, I'm afraid I've never met her before, but I've heard great things of her abilities as the top in Uzuka, as well as a great mother for raising both Kibal and you. Anyway, I hope to meet her in the future. I enjoyed our date a lot, and I also hope that you could get some getaways from Konoha for us to do it again, the date I mean. I look forward to meeting you once again Hana-chan, take care. Take care once again. Naruto. P.S. Oh could you do me a favor? The messenger toad you summon is quite a greedy bastard, so he will require a reward for the messages. Could you, perhaps, buy four chocolate bars to give to him, I don't know where to find them and I can't just go anywhere. After Hannah read it all, she snickered a little bit and remembered that Naruto was born a prankster, hence why he enjoyed reading about Kiba being teased. The final part of the letter was a bit odd, 
but if Naruto asked her to buy some chocolate bars, it wasn't so hard. Hannah didn't know much about totes, but seeing that Naruto knew them Hannah wouldn't question it. She was surprised at what he said about her mother being the top in Uzuka, and a great mother and it only added to things she liked about him. She knew that Naruto was an orphan since birth and must, often, imagine what his life would be if his parents would be alive. Equals 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 at the end of torture and interrogation department equals equals equals. Ibiki Tsunade and Kakashi were watching Anko's method of torture and Tsunade actually thought her hemophobia was resurfacing once again. Anko proved to be quite a vicious woman as she injected Takara with enough poison that his skin was beginning to burn like acid, but yet the man was still holding his tongue. Blood was all over the man's body, and a few drops fell on Anko's coat, but she wasn't one to lose to this guy. Back behind the windows, the three watchers were almost quitting their attempt on linking the man to Danzao. This Takara person wasn't human he felt no pain. Nothing they attempted on him was enough for the man to stutter the information. Instead, the only sound that left his mouth were painting sounds and laughter as a way of mocking the interrogators. I'll give one last shot before you'll meet the Shinigami, asshole. Tell me who do you work for, you piece of shit shouted Anko before once again hearing the man laughing at her expense, angering the woman greatly. Grabbing a kunai, she charged at the man with the sole intention of stopping the weapon near the man's neck, and so she did, but with no avail. The man didn't show a hint of fear, just instead kept looking at her while laughing once more. Seeing this, Anko sighed in dismay. She knew of a rat inside the ranks that was working for Akatsuki, reporting to them about Naruto's position, so she wanted to help. Naruto was the one responsible for bringing the only family Anko still has and she wanted to do something for him. But this man was hard to crack, make it impossible. Well, you'll die in a couple of minutes, anyway. At least if we're not able to take any information out of you, we'll be satisfied to see you convulsing in pain before falling limb on the floor. It'll be real nice you know, all the blood spattered around, you limp body on the ground. Bleeding said Anko before turning her back on him and headed back to the room. Once inside, she looked at those inside and sighed in dismay. She actually thought the man wouldn't be able to resist the n number of poisons she injected through his veins, but to her and everyone present's dismay, the Anduni agent was tougher than all of them thought. Ibiki, Anko, we need this man alive. Give him the antidote and lock him up. We'll have to come up with different methods of persuasion said Sinead as she turned and left the premises. Anko and Ibiki nodded and went inside the room as Kakashi vanished with a shunshin. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. Naruto and Temurai made a small camp and Naruto was just observing a panting Temurai as he pretty much swallowed her food without even wasting time in chewing. The two of them crossed the desert while escaping the hurricanes but at the cost of terrible tiredness at least on Temuri's part. Naruto, though, was unscathed and even his breathing was irritably normal. The woman thought about getting mad at him for not being at all tired while she was on the verge of collapsing from tiredness. The two of them crossed the entire desert in less than a day and managed to escape what Temuri referred to be the worst hurricane week ever. While they managed to escape, one that was forming another one would form immediately at the place where they would soon be obliging them to use chakra on their feet the whole time. In fact, the only reason Temurai didn't collapse from lack of chakra was because of her rather large reserves, at least high enough for a jown in Kunoichi. After finishing her plate, she looked at the masked hunter Nin in front of him and tried to study him for a while. Along the way, he didn't show any hints of displeasure which could be caused by either high chakra consumption or heavy strain in his leg muscles for using them so much as they did. He was just doing this as he was a highly experienced Suna ninja who crossed the desert way too many times. She was also curious to the fact that her brother Gara knew the man, even though he was wearing the mask the entire time. Naruto for his turn certainly appreciated the trip. Wind was his element, after all he used the already existing wind in the atmosphere to move faster thus avoiding the hurricanes without resorting to using much chakra. He considered Temuri's angry look at him and wondered if she thought of taking advantage of the wind force around the hurricanes, but seeing that she was deadly tired, Naruto guessed not. Temuri-san, I would advise you to get some rest for tomorrow. Don't worry, I'll take the night's watch said Naruto, 
before hearing a faint snort from the blonde Sunakunoichi. Don't you dare think of me as weak hunter-san, you don't need to take the full night's watch, I'll rest for four hours and then I'll cover the area while you get to rest explained Tamurai before looking at Naruto as in daring him to say otherwise. Naruto for his part didn't mind it one bit, but also he would refuse to bring himself to argue with an angry Kunoichi, especially seeing how much of a temper she has. So Naruto just nodded and shunshined within a small typhoon and instantly appeared on top of a tree nearby. Temurai once again snorted at the guy before heading towards her tent. Once he saw Temurai entering the tent, Naruto sighed in dismay upon seeing that he was stuck with this troublesome woman for the duration of his little mission. You know, there are tons of things you could do to ease her up, I mean you and I can feel the pent-up energy she was releasing. I bet she doesn't get any of it back home said Kyubi, earning another sigh from Naruto. I really thought you'd quiet down after what me and Hannah did, but I was sadly mistaken, I guess once a pervert always a pervert mumbled Naruto as he made a couple of cage bunchins and settled them towards key positions around the camp, so that they would be able to alert the real one in case of an enemy present. Well, although Hannah is one fine piece of meat you'll have to admit that this Temurai person is also just as nice. Plus as to your thoughts, I'm pretty sure I explained to you already that monogamy is not my thing stated Kyubi, before seeing Naruto agreeing with a nod. Temurai is the Keisuke's sister and I know that any man who even looks at her the long way would have to face his sand. I guess he's overprotective, said Naruto, as the conversation continued for a while. When Naruto's time ended, he dropped of the tree and went to the tent to call Temurai. He could simply forget about the plan and just remain watching, but he had a gut feeling that a proud and stubborn Kunoichi would like this at all, so he went to wake her. After some time calling her name and no answer, he opened the tent in order to see if the woman was asleep or something. However, the sight was very funny as Temurai was not only sleeping, but also drooling. Well, I guess she would be even angrier if woke her up thought Naruto before going back to his tree to remain the night watch. Equals 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 the next day equals equals equals. Slowly opening her eyes Temurai found it strange that the first rays of sunlight reached the tent. The hunter Nin was supposed to wake her up for her time watch, but instead he never did. The nerve of that guy, she snarled and thought. Grabbing her fan, she stormed out of the tent only to see the hunter there seating on top of a tree log making some morning stew. Good morning Temurai-san, I hope you like stew for breakfast, it's the only thing I can do right now, slept well. Asked Naruto, though he knew that the woman would want some explaining as to why he didn't wake her in the first place. Bastard? Why didn't you wake me up? I thought we agreed to have shifts, asked Temurai, though a part of her was thanking the man for not waking her. I tried to believe me. I called you up a few times, and then when I saw you inside the tent, you're pretty much drooling in your sleep. I figured you're too tired from the trip, so I just returned and let you sleep. Besides, if I did wake you you wouldn't be able to rest at all thus being a hindrance when we find the missing Nin explained Naruto, though waiting for Temurai to be pissed at his commentary. But then he saw her face expression becoming more relaxed which meant he ended up doing her a favor. It was after she came willingly and sit next to him that he realized that what he did ended up being beneficial to her in the long run. Had she took her shift at night, she wouldn't be at her best against Mishimoto. Being a Jounin at such an early age always spoke highly of Temuri's skills both in Suna and Konoha. Her foot and abilities rivaled only the elite, and she was well in her way of becoming a master at her own element. Being that said, it would be quite a blow to her pride if she was beaten by Mishimoto because she wasn't able to have a full night rest. After picking a bowl that was offered by the hunter Nin, she drank it like a soup. While not as good as home-cooked meal, Temurai found the stew to be quite tasty on his own right and asked the hunter Nin. Being on the streets for so much time pretty much forces you to depend on yourself. So, anything from supplies, food, water, and the likes you have to gather on your own. I had to learn how to cook because if I were to eat at public places I would draw too much unwanted attention for myself, plus the fact that if I were to eat in restaurants, I'd have to go after A to S ranked enemies, and that is something I'm not prepared to do yet. Eat up, and then we'll track Mishimoto said Naruto to which Temurai nodded, and drank the rest of the stew, 
before asking for more. A while later Naruto and Temurai arrived in river country in hopes of finding the bastard. Naruto was cursing Temuri's presence because he couldn't summon Gamakichi to aid him from fear of the girl discovering his identity and ruin everything. So, it ended being his hunter nin tracking skills and Temuri's information of Mishimoto to track the guy. According to Gara, the guy urged for a challenge so it was likely he wouldn't waste time in hiding, or even using Genjutsu to hide his presence from others. The village was sparse at best, some local villagers were found taking care of their agriculture. It wasn't as crowded as in major villages, so both Temurai and Naruto would be able to simply spot the man they are looking for. The description was easy to follow, just see a man with a giant iron fan on his back. Mishimoto's appearance didn't stand on the crowd, so it would be down to finding the big fan and hope for the best. It didn't take long, and they reached the end of the village, although no sign of a man carrying a giant fan on his back. However, just before the two turned to get back and search for more, both of them sensed the shift in the air current and jumped on instinct. Their action proved to be the right one as just after they jumped a huge gust of wind passed through the area, sending everything in its path flying. Just as Naruto and Temurai landed on top a little oak house, they heard the man's voice. I'm honored to have your presence here with little old me Temurai Sama. I was hoping Suna sent someone more worthy of fighting me and they sent you, how disappointing. Maybe, the Keisgij is being mad or something. That or he's too scared to come himself and deal with me, personally said Mishimoto as he fully opened his fan and eyed Temurai's companion. Ah, uh, look what we have here a hunter nin from Konoha. I've got to tell Temurai, it seems the Keisgich is really desperate to plead help from Konoha with an intern affair. Doesn't matter, though, you two will add up with the number of fools that become victim of my battle fan. Man this guy don't stop talking, my ears are hurting already, let's show what we're made of Naruto said Kyubi within Naruto's mind, earning a nod from Naruto who in turn asked for Temurai to stand aside. What are you talking about? You can't hope to beat him alone. I'll help shouted Temurai, earning a nod in the negative from the hunter. The Keisgich called me for a reason Temurai. It's my mission to deal with him. I prefer to fight my enemies alone, so don't interfere unless I'm done for said Naruto, before he took his sword and charged Mishimoto with speeds that astounded the Suna Jounin. Mishimoto though, wasn't easily fooled by speed alone and did a strong swing of his battle fan, thus increasing the gust of wind and sending towards Naruto, who jumped out of the way before looking at the man for a while. Because of the battle fan, I'd assume he is a long-range fighter so it wouldn't be wise for me to charge straight at him. My approach would have to be different, and I know just the way. Thought Naruto as he channeled a bit of Kyubi's chakra before making the hand seals. Katan career end in fire release, fire dragon missile jutsu. Instantly, Naruto expelled from his mouth a thin layer of white fire towards the enemy before the fire became stronger. Mishimoto cursed at the fire technique and used his battle fan to create a wind diversion to make contact with the fire attack and explode. After the contact was made smoke filled the area and Mishimoto couldn't see a damn thing. Right now, he knew the hunter nin's plan to come closer by creating some smoke, but he realized too late as Naruto was already on his side with his sword on his hands attacking. The man wasn't known for his close ranged skills so much, but a lot of enemies tried to take him from close ranged only to be killed afterwards, and the hunter nin wouldn't be an exception. Mishimoto used his battle fan in order to block Naruto's sword swings to the best of his abilities, before doing a backflip and doing another swing with his battle fan for the technique Fuden Dai Kamaidachi wind release, great whirlwind jutsu. Suddenly, Naruto saw in front of him, a huge mass of small wind swords ready to cut all over his body. Molding his chakra fast, Naruto managed to make a barrier of wind around him, thus escaping from the incoming slice attacks that would kill him for sure. Immediately Naruto made some hand seals for Futen K's no Yeba wind release, wind sword jutsu and threw it at Mishimoto, who did a backflip and avoided the attack. I'm afraid I misjudged your abilities Hunter-san, not only do you possess a fire affinity, but you're also proficient in Futen ninjutsu. That's quite rare to occur, since they are opposites said Mishimoto as he remained with his battle fan prepared for a new swing while watching Naruto's actions. The blonde for his part, used his speed and within moments, was right in front of Mishimoto, 
not even giving time for the man to use his battle fan to keep the distance. Naruto figured that if he remained close enough Mishimoto wouldn't be able to use the devastating Futen attacks. Using straight Taijutsu this time Naruto was able to land some blows to the man's stomach before flipping in midair and landing a nice roundhouse kick on the man's face thus sending him flying. Naruto was about to make the hand seals for a fire technique when he saw the man using the momentum and flipping his body in midair before using Futen Daytop a wind release, great breakthrough Jutsi, straight at Naruto. The blonde was taken by surprise and was hit dead on, before sent flying towards the trees. Mishimoto smiled at yet another ruined attempt of Suna to kill him and turned to Temurai now for the second round. The hunter Nin managed to inflict some damage to the man's muscles, but he was able to use his swing since Temurai wouldn't come close ranged from being the same type of fighter as him. So Temurai san you and I have the same style of fighting so it would only seem fair to settle this by seeing who's got the stronger wind, wouldn't you agree? Asked Mishimoto, before seeing Temurai snarling in response. The woman was at awe from seeing the hunter Nin's abilities and actually hoped that he would take Mishimoto down, but when she saw the Daytop ascending him flying her hopes were gone, and now she had to fight this man. Just as Temurai was about to use her battle fan, she heard the hunter's voice. I thought I made myself clear when I said that you're not to intervene unless I am done for Temurai san. This man is my prey, so if you step away and let me handle him. I appreciate it, said Naruto as he appeared next to Temurai with his arms crossed. Mishimoto, for his part, wondered why the hunter was still alive after being sent flying with astonishing speed to the forest nearby. By looking at him, though, Mishimoto couldn't find a single wound on his body. You're quite smart and took me by surprise. But I won't happen again, I assure you, said Naruto before taking his sword once more and vanishing straight at the opponent who pretty much dodged the sword swing by pure instinct. Mishimoto was astounded to see that the speed doubled, and couldn't follow the hunter Nin. This is bad, if I can't see him that means he can sneak close and deliver the killing blow. I'll have to resort to using more chakra for my techniques and hope to keep him at a safe distance. Naruto didn't waste time and after the missing blow, he charged once more and attacked Mishimoto who had to place his battle fan in front of the sword so as not to be sliced in half. However, he left his side open, which is why Naruto took the advantage and flipped his body, aiming a strong and chakra channeled kick straight at the man's stomach, before sending him flying. Mishimoto struggled even to breathe as the air left him. Also he could hear the sound of ribs breaking hence how his body was aching now in numerous places. Naruto stood in front of the man as he was using his hands to hold his stomach in a failed attempt of stopping the pain. Naruto's kick injured him so badly, the man was struggling to even get up. Don't bother trying to get up Mishimoto. I ended up hitting one of your body's pressure points that happened be located within the middle of the stomach, the abdomen. This sensitive area when hit with chakra sends immeasurable waves of pain through your whole body thus hindering its movement from fear of overexerting your muscles. How does it feel to be like this, useless against an enemy? I'd gladly kill you now, but I'm not allowed to do so, hence why I'll send you to unconsciousness sweet dream said Naruto, as he placed two fingers just below the man's right ear into a certain position on the man's neck. The man instantly closed his eyes and fell limb on the floor. Equals 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 at suna equals equals equals. Inside the Keisuke's office, two days later, both Naruto and Temurai were in front of Gara reporting the success of Mishimoto's capture, thus pleasing Gara greatly. Congratulations on a job well done, Temurai you're excused for the time being. Hunter San I'd like to talk to you for a moment asked Gara to which both nodded and Temurai left. Pressure points, Naruto. Please explain asked Gara, earning a nod from Naruto, who took his mask off and looked at his friend. It was the only way to subdue the bastard without killing him, I'm afraid. I'm still learning the art, but I was already able to locate one and hit it. Mishimoto doubled in pain the second he landed on the ground explained Naruto, earning a nod from Gara, who in turn, wrote a letter to Tsunade explaining the whole thing and sent it to Konoha via one of his personal messenger hawks. So, where to now? Do you have a next target in mind? Asked Garato, which Naruto nodded, and showed Gara the picture of his next target. The man's name is Hitoro Matsuyama and was a Jounin level ninja by the time he fled the village after stealing some money from Kanaha's vaults. 
I'm heading to tea country and look after him said Naruto, earning a nod from Gara, who handed him the bingo book. Well, then, thanks once again for your help and I hope to hear from you again some other time said Gara. to which Naruto nodded and vanished, only to appear on top of the Keisuke's tower looking towards his next destination as the sun was just setting for the day. That's it for this part if you enjoyed it then like, share and subscribe for the next part as it's going to be more interesting, and also check out the other playlist hope you would like them too.